Okay. All right, there we go. Now it's working. All right. I had to lower the bitrate slightly, but I think it should be all right now. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream where I construct the Great Pyramid of Giza. Uh, I've already made some progress, as you can tell. Um, the base is pretty much finished. Uh, I was working on that yesterday. But, uh, yeah, I do not have speakers hooked up, by the way. Just telling you straight up. So uh, I will not be able to have, I will not be able to hear anything. So I'm leaving that all up to you right now. You could do it, Teching. Paw, great. Woo. Hi, Johnny. Hi, an impronounceable series of letters I do not know anything about. You sound far away. Well, there is an echo in here, so keep that in mind. Uh, as for this, I can turn up the microphone audio, so I can do that. Can do that. That is something that is within my power. All right, there. I made that louder. La. And I can also do this. La. All right, now I'm starting to get into yellow. All right, how's that? That sound good? Let's freaking go. Whoa, your house looks awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. I'm very happy where I ended up. I'm very happy here. Yes. Kitchen and dining room reveal. This is not the first time you've seen my kitchen and dining room, and this is not the first time I've did a stream like this. Um, I'm the unpronounceable series of words. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, bring Barry closer. Barry is right where he needs to be right now, okay? Uh, I will just move my entire kitchen island that is bolted to the floor. I will just move that a little closer. Um, your kitchen is really nice. I'm just getting a lot of compliments from my kitchen. I, I, I love the kitchen. I mean, that's like two reasons I bought this house. The two made an office for YouTube, and the other one was the kitchen. I, I really wanted a kitchen... That had an island, and I just got some new countertops too. Those were those are new. These are new. These are new. And that bread box we just put in the other day, because I had to take that out, and um, it was a pain because when we put the new countertops in, the bread box could not fit right back in. So it was more of a pain than you'd imagine. I had to call somebody, you know, out to help me, and like we had to get a belt sander and a grinder and like get it the right shape to fit it back in there. But we we got the bread box back in, so that's good. So the kitchen is, and I got a new sink. So the kitchen, I'm done with the kitchen for a while. The kitchen is at a point where I'm happy with. I thought about painting this pink back here, but I actually don't mind it. I think it's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, you need to do a cooking stream. Who knows? We might do a cooking stream tonight. I'm not really sure. I might get hungry and have to go make something. Uh, yeah, the Lego pyramid looks great. Yeah, so, oh, wait. Wait, hold up. Oh no, we're not doing this. We're dropping frames. Not very many of them, but we are dropping some frames. I'm dropping this down here. Okay. All right, we were dropping not a lot of frames, but a couple, couple of frames. All right, literally the only thing that is different between this setup I put up up here and the setup I have downstairs is the cable that connects the computer to the internet. Everything else is the same. Same computer I always stream on, same camera. Uh, I guess the microphone is different, so that's that's a thing. But I'm uh, pretty sure that has nothing to do with it. I plugged in this blue snowball, and that's the reason I'm dropping frames. But uh, yeah, the only difference is the cable. And the cable is actually a better quality cable. It's a Cat 6. It's better than the Cat 5 I have downstairs. But whatever, we shouldn't be dropping frames. Anyway, quick, pick up all the frames. All right, so anyway, yeah. Um, Great Pyramid of Giza is a Lego set that I uh, saw the other day. I was at Barnes & Noble. I shop in there a lot. I saw this thing. I see really interesting Lego sets in there all the time, but never ones that I'm going to be willing to, like, you know, spend a lot of money on and then put them together and everything like that. But I saw this thing, and I'm like, I love Egypt. I consider myself a student of Egyptology. I've never actually studied it in like a university or anything, but I love history. And ancient Egypt is probably my single favorite era of, you know, ancient civilization, all that kind of jazz. I love it. And uh, hopefully we'll talk a lot about ancient Egypt tonight, or maybe not. I don't know. We probably won't talk about ancient Egypt at all, but I would like to. So I saw this in there and I'm like, you know what, if I'm ever going to put together a Lego set, this would probably be this. 
This is part of the architectural series. They have a bunch of others. They have like the White House. They have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They have the Taj Mahal. Um, they have a lot of other archaeological things, but I, I feel like this is like the coolest in my opinion, just because I'm a huge Egypt fan. So we'll put that back there. Now the kicker, though, and I'm just going to tell you this right out of the gate, so we're, you're not disappointed later on. Um, this literally is only half of the pyramid. <laughs> Oh, now we're dropping frames again. Darn. Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. All right, we're good. Are we good? Are we okay? Are we okay today, stream? All right. Okay. Now we're all right. You know, I guess you need to get a Cat 7 cable. Maybe a Cat 9 cable. I, I don't know. So this pyramid is only half of the total pyramid. So if you can kind of see it here. So this part right here, this is kind of like the opening part. There's going to be where the uh, the mortuary temple or the funerary complex would be placed. And this is the little causeway that goes up to the pyramid proper. And then this area right here is going to be the pyramid. So it's going to go up this way. And then this is where the, um, you know, this is where the uh, pyramid will rise up at an angle with the capstone up here. And then this side will literally just be straight up. Now, you might think that's a ripoff. It kind of is. I wish they would have given you the option. Um, that's probably my only complaint out of this entire set. I wish they would have, if you wanted to build the full pyramid, they could have given you pieces for that. For those of you wondering why they would do it like this, it actually works a lot better whenever you're displaying it. Because the place I'm going to put this is like a bookcase. And to have this back, you know, just be flat, so you can just put it right up against a bookshelf, that's the best way to actually, like, display it. Um, if this was a proper pyramid, it would be like this, and you really couldn't, like, put it flat against a wall. Still, like I said, I really wish they would have at least maybe... I would have even have been okay with the price being a little higher if they would have provided the full pyramid. And then in the instruction booklet, they could have said, hey... If you want the pyramid to just be flat against the wall, stop here. If you want the full pyramid, continue through steps 10 through 12 or whatever like that. That would have been better. I would have been okay with paying a little bit more money if they provided the full thing. But as it stands right now, this was not cheap. This set was like, uh, I paid like $110 for this. And that was with my, I had like a Barnes and Noble membership and I had some like uh, some discounts saved up. I think I had like $10 of credit that was saved up because I buy a lot of books there. I've been buying the entire Berserk Deluxe Edition. So I've, I'm on the 11th one right now. So I dropped a lot on there. So like, it's like $110 for this thing. So, you know, if, if, you want the full pyramid, you literally have to drop another $110 to buy another set. On the back of this, and actually, let me see. I'm going to show you this. I hope this works. Uh, let's see. Scene 11. Here we go. Ah, there it is. So I have another camera down here. Ooh, check out my hands. Hi. <laughs> so I have another camera down here. Um, and as you can see from the back of this, these two uh, little notches right here, will actually be where you would attach the other half of the pyramid. So they planned this. It wasn't like, you know, they were just like, oh, we're just going to build half of it. No, they, they thought about the idea of attaching another set of this. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go out of my way to spend another $110 uh, to get the other half of this pyramid. I don't know, teching sounds a little square up to a point. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's Barry's bounty? I need to know. Oh, Barry's worth, like, I don't know, at least $50 billion. Um, I'm going to need a drink before we start this. Uh, that's one thing I did not plan. I did not grab a drink. Archaeology time. Come on, grab your friends. No, seriously, come on and grab your friends. It's going to be a fantastic time. I'm going to go grab some water. And we're probably going to drop frames when I do that. So get ready for that. Should we do lemon, coconut, or... Um, Lime. Lemon, coconut, or lime. You put the lime in the coconut and mix it all up. You put the lime in the coconut and mix it all up. Ba -ba 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 waiting on the lag. Uh, grab a blunt. I don't have any of those, unfortunately. Sorry. 
Don't have any of those. Lime, okay, thank you, Mr. Hyena. I will grab a lime. That was my favorite one. You know me so well. All right. Lime. Ugh, okay, we didn't drop any frames that time. Sometimes when I move, like when I'm standing in a static position and not really moving all that much, and then I move all of a sudden, that's when it'll drop frames. Other times it won't. I don't know. You put that lime in the coconut. I, I do have lime and I do have coconut. These are bubblies. I will now show you. Oh, man, this is so cool. I'm glad I have another camera set up here. Uh, if my mouse works. Because uh, the receiver for the mouse is a little far away. So, yeah. So, there we go. See? Bubbly. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Well, with that being said, the Great Pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, ain't going to build itself. You know what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? So I think we should get ready. This, by the way, this whole part here took me about an hour to do. So I really don't think it's going to take that long. I really doubt it. This was the first two bags of blocks, and it took me about an hour and ten minutes. Uh, and I messed up very minimal. I, I did mess up a few times, but it wasn't actually all that bad. Um, Lego is really nice because they give you this little piece here that allows you to, like, um, you know, pop off a piece if it's, like, wedged in. If you put it in wrong, you could just, like, lift it up with this. This is a lot better than that Mega Block shit I put together with that Blast Toys set. I gotta tell you right now. Yeah. Like, I was kind of really upset that I, I bought the Mega Blocks instead of Legos. I really thought those were Legos last time. But this is a really cool instruction book. It tells you some information about the pyramids and everything. Like, you know, it's pretty cool. All right, where did we leave off? We left off at bag three. This is bag two. Uh, how many blocks? I don't know, man. Like, uh, it's only, only 1,476 pieces. So it's almost 1,500, which is not that much by Lego standards, you know? All right, I think we're getting close to this here. All right, here we go. Bag three. Bag three. All right. How many blocks? All right, let's do that. Such a professional setup. Um, you know, I you know I like it. You know, I got Exodia and uh, Pharaoh Atem over here. I got my extra camera. I got my bubbly. You know, so yeah. Wow, Lego actually cares about their customers. Crazy, right? Yeah. I got the little mini bag I'm going to keep over here off of the side. Got my mouse. See, the last times I've done this, I've also ran it all through my laptop, which I'm glad that I'm doing. I had to lug my computer upstairs and everything, but I'm glad I'm doing it here. Is this Roblox? No, this is not Roblox. Oh, my God. There's a lot of small little pieces in this set. Okay. All right, let's get started. Let's do this. Woo! Ancient history. <laughs> I just slowly. All right, well, one thing I do do is I'm going I'm to need 28 of these. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm glad I set up the chat right here that I can read it. That makes things so much easier. How many bags to build this? Um, so, I mean, they say only eight. But the thing is, like, like there's two bag fives, you know, there's two bag eights, so it's probably closer to, like, like 13 or 14 bags. But, yeah. Lego cares about customers. That's why you need to buy the two sets for a complete pyramid. Once again, I need to reiterate this, because I feel like a lot of people would look at this and just be like, it's a ripoff! I don't think it's a ripoff, honestly, because where I'm going to put this, it would not fit if it was the full pyramid. It literally would not fit, okay? And I think it would look nicer to be displayed with the, the flat end being on the bookshelf. So I'm not complaining about this. I'm saying that um, I wish they would have packed it a little differently. But other than that, it's perfect for what I need it for. Dak in the chat. Hey, Dak. Holy hell, bag five? Well, we're on bag three right now. And actually, you guys came at a good time because we are now going to be building the Nile. The Great Nile River. Because, let me show you the angle here. So, so this is what we got here. This is the front of the complex. And this area right here with all the different colors here, like blues and like olive greens and stuff and teals. 
this is supposed to represent the Nile River. And then we're going to put these little translucent ones on top of it to kind of give it the impression of the Nile, of water on top of it. So that's the first thing we're going to be doing here tonight. Buggy is Sosuke Eisen. I 100% agree. How long do you think this will take you? Well, like I said last night, it only took me an hour. But thing is, I'm going to be talking over all of this. So, you know, like, it's probably... Wait, I'm already messing up. Yep, I'm already messing up. The first block I put down was literally me messing up. But that's okay. Because you can mess up. It's life, man. It's just life. If I can get this out. There it is. See? There you go. Science. Yeah. All right. I got to grab these little things. All right. Ah, I see. I see. All right. A lot of these all look the same. All right. Okay. This is everything I should need for this one step. <laughs> uh, there's no mistakes. There's only happy accidents. You know, you're right. You are right. You know, just think about the way Bob Ross would have built the Great Pyramid, you know? Bob Ross, taken before his time, he would have built the Great Pyramids and he would have done it, he would have done it happily. Well, that's just a happy little pyramid we got, guys. That's just a happy little pyramid. Water blocks. This looks like Walter White's meth. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, I love Breaking Bad. Great show. Better Call Saul, I honestly would say is better though. I would uh I would make that call. Can I prove to you that I am not a Lunarian? No, I um I cannot prove to you that I am not a Lunarian. Okay, so then this one you have to skip some you know. So that's the thing. You just kind of have to pay attention and don't assume anything. <laughs> don't assume anything. Because right when you think that like, oh, I just have to put this block in six times in a row, that's when they get you. Granted, now I really only have to put this block in four times in a row. I can see the lurking legend back there. Yeah, Barry's back there chilling out with a pharaoh and uh, an obelisk. Yeah. Love catching the live streams. Well, thanks for showing up. Yeah, this step. Uh, I've I've discovered Lego. I don't know what it was with that Mega Block set. I really don't. Oh, this is this is the same thing all the way down. So yeah, I don't know what it was about that Mega Block set. If it was just the way that they explained the instructions, maybe it might have been the set itself because that set did have a lot of small pieces. This one has a lot of larger pieces to like obviously work with. But I just didn't have that much fun putting together that Blast Toys thing. I really didn't. I glad I'm, I'm glad I did it, but like you know. I wish it would have uh, been more fun. And this was definitely fun. Yeah, this goes all the way to the end. All the way to the end. Favorite flavor of, uh, flavor of bubbly? Probably lime, honestly. Lime is solid. Stargate landing pad, yep. How did I get into anime? Um... Probably through, like, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho early on. Probably was, like, some of the first anime I ever watched. Okay, I think we're done with step uh, 37. I think that's the step. Okay, cool. Nice. And then we're going to need more of these, as I assumed. So that was nice. They broke this up into two parts. Kind of like knowing that it was going to get confusing if you had to do all at once. So they're like, yeah, let's just break this up into two parts. Trying to work from left to right, too. Uh, let's see. If Roman Empire never fell down, we have flying cars. Um, all right, legitimate question. Would you even want a flying car? No, seriously, I want you to think about that. Think about all the people that drive like crazy on the road. Do you really want them to have the ability of driving basically a tiny little airplane? Would, would you trust some of the people on the road? Would you even trust some of your own friends driving, like, literally an airplane that could crash into houses? I don't think you would. 
I have no desire to have a flying car. <laughs> okay? Not really. Yeah, yeah. Flying cars is one of those things that's like in fiction. It's like really cool. It's like, wow, in the year 2072, we're going to have flying cars. That's radical. And then you realize, you actually sit down and think about it like, oh God, flying cars would be scary as hell. <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to have a flying car. I don't want to fly in a flying car. That sounds horrible. People would need new licenses. No, like think about all the training that requires you to be an airline pilot. You can't just go out and be an, you, I can't just go down to the DMV or the, or the, uh, you know, the, the fucking whatever equivalent would be for the, um, you know, airspace, whatever. I can't just go down there and be like, I would like one pilot license, please. And then to be like, oh, okay, we'll just fill out this form and then we'll give you a, a, a flight test and you should be in and out of here in like an hour. <laughs> My driving test when I was getting my license took me an hour. It was like I was in and out kind of situation. And um, I got it, and that was it. So, uh, no, I don't think... I don't think that's how it would go. Hell yeah, I would love flying cars all day. I have the same chair as you. I'm glad... This is my office chair. I'm glad I brought this chair up here. Because my dining room chairs are not the... All right, we're back. All right, we're back. Not a big deal. All right. So. Oh, okay. We're going to do a little bit of that then. All right. Okay. Remember that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be, like, getting into Legos from here on out, but this is actually... The first Lego set I've ever built. Uh, if you don't count the Mega Bloks thing, which I don't. So, yeah. First Lego set. Alright. This goes all the way to the end. Check the Super Chats teching. Well, I'm going to check the Super Chats as best as I can. Hey, do you think we've seen some of the next gen admirals with sword? Or will there be other young Marines? I mean, like, Kobe's going to be an admiral by the end of the story. That's happening, definitely. I don't know if Helmeppo or Hibari are going to become the next admirals. Uh, but I think Kobe's a shoe in uh, How much money would the Straw Hats had if they would the Straw Hats have if they had someone on the outside collect their captured enemy bounties? Uh, like, oh, okay. Well, I I don't know now because I'd have to do math and I suck at it. And I'm also not super familiar with all the Straw Hats brand new bounties, but that number is on the wiki. So if you just go to the Wikipedia, if you go to the One Piece wiki, go under Straw Hat Crew, and on the side, it'll literally add up all of their bounties. So you could just look at it right there. Like that number is right there on the wiki page. Uh, it would be several. I, I actually think I did look at that number, and I think it's just south of 9 billion. Yeah, I think it's like 8 billion something. I think Kaido and Big Mom together still had a higher bounty. When they were working together, If you t Kaido and Big Mom's bounties combined was more. But the Straw Hats are very close to that right now. That's a damn nice stovetop. Well, thank you. It's a gas stove. It's a gas stove, sir. Or madam. Put that there. Okay. Oh. Geography is everything. It's eight billion eight hundred sixteen million one thousand. Yep, there you go. Pretty big number. I was kind of right. When is Rolling Logan coming back? I don't know. But soon. I don't know, but he'll be back. Trust me. He'll be back. Rolling Logan. One Piece wouldn't be One Piece without Rolling Logan. Cats or dogs? Um, oh, you know what's funny? So, I, I prefer dogs, but I was walking in the park today, and I actually got a picture. There was a cat just walking in the park. And uh, he was very friendly. And he came over, and... Uh, 
you know, I was just chilling out with this cat. So check out this cat. It's my water bottle on the ground there. So yeah, there's just this epic cat just hanging out, and he was very friendly. Um, there's a bunch of, like, right next to the park, there's a, a lot of houses, like people's houses and, like, backyards, like, right next to, like, connected to the park itself. So I figured that he's probably just, because, like, you know, the park and the backyard, some people don't have fences, so it's just backyard and then park. So I figured it was just somebody's cat that just had wandered over into the park and just hung out with him for a little bit. Nice cat. Pretty chill. Pretty chill cat. Yeah. And I thought it was very appropriate because I'm doing the Egypt stream today, and the Egyptian, one of the Egyptian gods is Bast, and uh, Bast is a cat. So I thought that was a good sign that uh, the Egyptian stream was going to go great. It's going swimmingly so far, except for all the times I had to reset. Uh, the one time I had to reset. Yeah. Bastet, Bast, either way. A lot of different ways you can say this. Actually, even Pharaoh. Um, Pharaoh can be pronounced Pharaoh. That's an accurate, because, you know, ancient Egyptian, nobody speaks it anymore. So it's kind of like Latin in a sense where we know how it's written, but we don't... We don't know how ancient Egyptian would have actually been pronounced during, like, the Old Kingdom or something. You know what I mean? We just have to kind of assume. So we have ancient Egyptian. We have uh, Latin. You know, we have it's written, but that's it. So it could be Pharaoh. It could be Pharaoh. Fun fact, there's going to be a lot of those this stream. Um, Pharaoh was not even the term used for the king of Egypt until, like, the New Kingdom. It was, like, well over a thousand years before the Great Pyramid of Giza was built um, was when the, that term Pharaoh or Pharaoh began to emerge. Um, before then, I believe it was just the king, just king of Egypt. Egypt itself, you see, most of the shit that we know about Egypt comes from um, the Greeks, because the Greeks occupied Egypt for a time when it was uh, Ptolemaic Egypt, and they wrote a lot of stuff down in their script, uh, in the Coptic script, and that's actually a lot of the stuff, that's where the Rosetta Stone comes from, because while the Greeks were um, issuing uh, decrees, they wrote stuff down in the original Egyptian, but then they also translated it into Demotic and Coptic. And that's what the Rosetta Stone is. The Rosetta Stone, why that was such a big deal when that was founded in 1822, was you have the Rosetta Stone, which is higher, which is the same paragraph, like the same edict, written in hieroglyphics, written in Demotic, and written in Coptic, which was Greek. So we knew how to write in Coptic, but we didn't know what hieroglyphics were. We didn't know how to decipher them up until that point. We still had not that knowledge. It was lost. And so we found the Rosetta Stone, and that was why it was such a big deal. It's like, holy crap, we know how to read Greek. So because it's the same sentence, we can decipher hier hieroglyphics now. So that's why the Rosetta Stone was so important. Single-handedly crack the code when it came to deciphering the ancient Egyptian text. That's, that's your first Egypt fact of the night. There will be more. God help me. Ra, Bast, Amun, Ra, help me. There will be more. Mm. Hold on a second. Let me zoom in on this chat a little bit. That's better. Can you tell his favorite mythos is Egyptian? I shit, dude. I couldn't tell. You know, like, I just, like, look at the shirt and the fact I'm building a great pyramid and I have all this Egyptian crap. I didn't buy any of this for the video except for this. Everything else here, I just own. Yeah. God just gave us the cheat code. I mean, yeah, I guess. If you want to look at it like that, sure. Let there be the Rosetta Stone. What class do you think you're playing for One Piece D&D Marines? That's a secret. That is a secret for the moment. I uh, texted Rustage about it the other day, though. Because Rustage was like, I, I need to know. I need to know what you're playing, teching. And I'm like, Rustage, calm down. And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, damn, I'll tell you. And I told him. And he never got back to me. Told him all about my character, and he never even responded. Don't even know if he likes it. <laughs> ads. Oh, did you just... Oh, you guys get an ad? Did you get an ad about Egypt? Because that'd be funny. <laughs> Gods of War, Egypt. So, what else do you want to know about Egypt? 
because this is if you ever wanted to ask teching a question about ancient egyptian history or mythology this is the stream to do it uh stupid whole foods ad did you like the mummy movies i've never seen them i've never seen the mummy movies i've seen reviews of them online um, I've actually watched a series where Egyptologists will actually look at the Mummy movies, and I'm not really impressed. I like Brandon Fraser. I love him in a lot of stuff. Um, have not seen The Whale yet. I, I want to check that out. I think Brandon Fraser is a great actor, but uh, I just did not care for The Mummy. And uh, maybe if I was a little kid when it, because I was a little kid when it came out. If I saw it when it came out, I would have probably loved it. Um, I probably would have thought it was really scary, honestly. But um, looking back on it. Like, looking at the reviews of it and how it looked now, and I'm just like, ah, no. I'd be just watching that movie and being like, they got that wrong, they got that wrong, they got that wrong. Like, yeah. And did they play card games? Um, They did have a board game. They actually turned that board game into a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh card. I think it was, like, Senet or something. Like, S-E-N-E-T was their game, something along those lines. Uh, it was a kind of board game, kind of like a chess or, like, a precursor to chess. But they did have board games, yeah. Nope, I've never played Age of Mythology. No. I have not played that. All right, I need these two pieces that look remarkably similar. There we go. All right. Have I seen Guardians 3? I didn't even know Guardians 3 was out until, like, a couple hours ago. When I... Oh, okay, so this is where the trees are going to go. Nice. Yeah, I was uh, getting food a couple hours ago after I was walking in the park. And uh, I was on YouTube, kind of scrolling through the YouTube feed, and the guy I watch uh, was actually reviewing Guardians 3, and I was like, oh man, Guardians 3 is out. I didn't even didn't even know that, so I'm going to go check that out. haven't watched it yet. Don't give me spoilers. Weren't uh, adult toys invented in Egypt? I mean, like, let's be honest here. Like, It doesn't take a genius to figure out a phallic object, so I don't think it was invented in Egypt. Some people actually think the obelisks, which I have one way over here. Some people think the obelisk really just came out. It, it was just a, uh, it was just a phallic symbol. That's really all it was. Which I mean, if you look at it, it's not really hard to tell. Yep, they all died. Man, they did all die. The Egyptians did all die. I mean, there's Egyptians now, but, like, the ancient Egyptians, they're, I'm, like, 99% sure they're all dead. Watching it tomorrow. Cool. I might check it out tomorrow, honestly. I might just go watch it. Do you like Zeus? Uh, I mean, okay. Do I like Zeus in the sense of, like, badass father of all gods? He throws lightning bolts down people's throats. Like, am I a fan of that? I mean, that's a cool image, you know, bearded guy chucking lightning bolts down from on high. Uh, am I a fan of uh, the the actions that Zeus undertook, as in going down to Earth on the regular and transforming into various large animals and having his way with women regardless of whether or not they consented to it? Not really a fan of that. Dude, there's a story. <laughs> there's a story about Zeus where the dude literally came down. There's a woman that's living by herself. Her husband went off to war. So Zeus is like, oh yeah. So he goes down, transforms into the woman's husband, goes into the house like, hi honey, I'm home from war. And she's like, oh my God, I missed you. And then they, you know, have some intimacy. And then the dude actually shows up. He's like, I am Zeus. And then her actual husband shows up. And I think Zeus killed him or something. I don't know, but like, that's that's Zeus to a T right there. Now you know why Hera was so pissed off at him all the time. Oh, Zeus. Zeus, Zeus, Zeus. Very problematic. Problematic god. Very problematic. Um, yeah. Do, do, do. Awkward! <laughs> yeah, I would say... I would say so. And, you know, Hera, you know, Hera hated Hercules and all of Zeus's children that were also not Hera's children. And, like, the reason for that is honestly, like, look, she can't do shit to Zeus. 
All right, she's Hera. She's like the goddess of, of marriage and like the, you know, household and like family and shit. But she can't do anything to Zeus. Zeus is the father of gods. Zeus is the son of Cronus, for God's sake. She can't do anything to Zeus. So she has to take the rage out on something and she takes it out on, her, on his kids, which is not fair in the slightest. Um, but yeah, that's that story. All right, got that done. All right, moving up here. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah, I was like, I was going to say, where are the rest of these? They did a pretty good job of separating them in a way that... Oh, get to it. Okay, we got a big one of these. All right, this is going... Uh, oh, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Push that down there. And then we're gonna push that here. And then push that down on the other side. You ever try shiny hunting in Pokemon? No. No, because I don't have the time of day for that, and I know I'd go crazy if I attempted it. Put that down there. Ah, uh, this down. Getting back to Egypt, who's your favorite god? Uh, my favorite god of Egypt is Sobek. Uh, Sobek is the crocodile god. He's the dude that literally is like a human appearance, but with just a crocodile for a head. He's just like a buff dude, crocodile for a head. Not just any crocodile, a Nile crocodile. He just looks the coolest. Of course, I do have a soft spot for um, Anubis. Anubis, I feel like... A lot of people focus on Anubis, right? Because he's this dog. Ja he's a jackal. He's this jackal dude. Everybody thinks he's the lord of the underworld, but he's really not. He's more like middle management of the underworld, if we're being honest. Anubis is the guy that's going to, when you go down there, he's going to kind of like help weigh your souls to determine like where you're going to go afterwards. He, he plays that part there. Um, there's a pair of scales, and then there's a feather, and the feather of Mott. And, uh, oh, Mott is also on there because Mott, M-A-A-T, sounds similar to my name, Matt. So Mott, Matt, so there's a little bit of thing there. Um, but anyway, there's the Feather of Mott. And so I believe Anubis is the one with the scales that will weigh the, the scales of the Feather versus your Ka. Your Ka is essentially your soul, your spirit, who you are, okay? And according to a particular papyrus scroll... You will be asked 42 questions when you go to the Egyptian afterlife. 42 questions. Hi, Daniel Green. Just wanted to say you're great, and it's been a blast doing D&D with you, buddy. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing okay, man. Um, 42 questions, and then if you're lying, the feather will be outweighed by your ka. And under perfect circumstances, it should remain even. Okay. So it's like it's perfect balance, as all things should be. And then if you are agree, like, everything's good, then you'll go to the afterlife, which is like the land of reeds or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, Kepri is cool. Kepri is the goddess or the god of the morning sun. Um, they have a lot of sun gods in Egypt. They're not all just Ra. Ra is a sun god, becomes Amun-Ra later during the, um, uh, during the New Kingdom. But there's... Kepri, who is the god of the morning sun, the sunrise, and then there's Atum, who is the god of the sunset. And then Ra is kind of the, just the generic sun god. Yeah. By the way, in case you're curious what the questions are when you, when you die, um, I don't know all 42 by heart, but some of them are pretty basic. I mean, generic questions that you would expect to be asked, you know, in an afterlife, like... Have you stolen anything? Actually, stealing shows up multiple times on the list. It's like, have you stolen from a person? Have you violently stolen something from a person? Have you stolen from a god? Have you stolen from a priest? You know, so stealing stuff shows up multiple times. They have to kind of double up to reach the 42. Um, but uh, there's some that are very, very odd. One of them is, 
have you ever eavesdropped on anybody? So have you ever eavesdropped on someone? Have you ever listened in on when you're not supposed to be listening? That's a sin. Have you ever lied? That's a sin. Have you ever made somebody cry? I remember that was on the list. So if you ever made somebody cry, you might not get in the Egyptian afterlife, man. So some of that, have you ever committed a curse upon somebody? Have you ever committed a curse upon a God? Have you ever lied to a God? You know, like it's those kind of questions, man. Yeah. So what if you answer truthfully? So I actually, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it actually is clear on if you answer truthfully, even if it's like, yes, I have eavesdropped on people. Yes, I have lied. Yes, I have made somebody cry before. You know what I mean? Like, even if you're being, you have done the things, but you're being honest about it. I think that's the point of the balance because the ka is the truth. It's, it's you telling the truth. So if you're telling the truth, then it should still remain balanced. I think after everything is said and done, they basically look at all of your sins and all the things you've committed, but at least you were telling the truth about it. So they have to make a determination. That might be up to an Anubis or Osiris or Mott herself, because Mott's... Mott is the idea of justice and order, and it's opposite Isfrit, which is the concept of chaos. But they're also an actual deity. So um, Mat is a, de a deity and also embodies everything about justice in the world. In essence, that's what the Egyptian pharaohs are really all about. Trying to maintain order and Mat in the land of Egypt. That is their main goal in being the voice of the gods. That's the way it's supposed to go. Anyway... A lot of God, a lot of pharaohs over the years that have taken that and flaunted it in uh, ways that are not cool. Okay. All right. I think we got that step done. Okay. Yeah. Thoth is pretty cool. Thoth is the knowledge god, generic knowledge god, bookworm kind of character. Yeah. I don't know much about the Hindu religious system. That is one that I haven't really tackled yet, unfortunately. I apologize, but hey, man. A lot of mythologies, a lot of lore in the world, and uh, only so much time in the day, you know? But I will get to it at some point. I want to tackle all the things that interest me and all realms of mythology interest me. It's just you can't tackle all of them. You can't tackle everything at once, you know? Can't do it all at once. Yeah, Shiva's a badass. Well, I got that from watching Record of Ragnarok, so you didn't have to tell me that. I knew that. I knew that at, off the cuff. All right. Okay, we're building the Sphinxes. That's going to be fun. Guys, we're building the Sphinxes. Sphinx eye. What's plural of Sphinx? I don't know. Um, so the Sphinx, uh, the Sphinx at the Giza complex. Um, it's not really known a hundred percent, but the idea is it's either the face of Khufu, whose pyramid we're building today, or it's the face of Khafra, who is a pharaoh that came after Khufu, might have been Khufu's son and also uh, has another pyramid at the Giza complex. Um, Khafra's pyramid, if you look at them side by side, Khafra's is slightly bigger or taller than the Giza pyramid, but the Giza pyramid is still larger because Khafra's was built on a, um, like a, a higher slope of land. So it's kind of cheating. So in terms of overall height and bricks, um, Khufu's pyramid is the largest out of the uh, all the pyramids that currently exist. All the pyramids that ever did exist. So I need I need one more of these. This little piece here. I'm looking for one more of these. It'll turn up. There it is. Yep. Lego is also really good about like I'm always worried they're gonna be missing a piece. You know, I'm always worried that there's like gonna be one piece missing. 
And I got to tell you, hasn't happened. I actually had one extra piece yesterday. One extra piece, which I have lost. So I guess I don't need it, but you know. Okay, we're building the sphinxes. Oh yeah, now these are these are smaller sphinxes that are just gonna line the path up to the main pyramid complex. So they're not the size of the actual sphinx that we all know and love today. No pun intended. Uh, ever did exist other South American pyramids and testified. Uh, Okay, any ancient Egyptian pyramid. All right, there's some pyramids. Yeah, there's actually a pyramid complex. I think the one at Angkor Wat over in Cambodia, which in terms of surface area is the largest. There is a pyramid that is technically larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza in South America or maybe in Central Mexico. I believe Central Mexico because the Mayans, but most of it is like an underground kind of complex. So it's kind of like you have to like determine what you consider. Like if you consider the size of a pyramid complex to just be literally like how, how much it covers, then it's Angkor Wat, definitely. Um, if you consider the pyramid to just be like an actual pyramid, like where is it? Yeah, like an actual, like a pyramid, you know, that's built like above the surface and it's shaped like this and that's the largest, it's Giza. There you go. How do you study mythology properly? Uh, well, you watch overly sarcastic productions. There, there you go. There's your, <laughs> you watch them. That's pretty much the rules. But like, no, I mean, nowadays with YouTube and the internet, I mean, there's way more ability. There's way more um, options and, and you don't have to worry about going to college to study this stuff. It's just, you know, readily available. You gotta, I mean, with mythology, there's a lot of different takes on it. History, obviously, you're going to have some varying opinions, especially when you're talking about ancient history. And then, of course, you get into um, conspiracy theories. Like, it was ancient aliens, man. It was the ancient aliens. What did build the pyramids? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, which, by the way, I'm really kind of, I, I, get, I get kind of insulted when um, people say that because it's like basically like writing off all of the genius of the ancient Egyptians. You're basically saying that like, yeah, there's no way a bunch of people living back in the year 2000 BC would be able to build a pyramid. There's no way they could have figured that shit out. Had to have been aliens. That's the only way. Um, the Egyptians were brilliant. Um, Imhotep, who was one of the first scholars of the world. He had, he was a, he was a, he was a scholar. He knew medicine. He studied medicine. He was the architect that built the first proper pyramid, the stepped pyramid of Djoser in Saqqara, okay? Like, they basically were looking at these structures and they'd be like, man, we have to like invent geometry to create these things. And they did. Now, they messed up a few times. There's the bent pyramid, which they started to build and then they kind of stopped. And then they, when they started back to building it, they kind of went this way. So the bent pyramid is kind of like, that it's not really a it, it, it's a pyramid it's still there but it's bent at a certain angle and then there's the collapsed pyramid or the maidum pyramid uh the maidum pyramid was built too narrow and it got to a point and then it just <sighs> collapsed so you can still see the central column of it sticking out of the base so you have the base of the pyramid and then this column and then it's just surrounded by rock and dust and and debris uh, and then finally, this is these were all built by the same guy, by the way, uh, Snefru, who was the first pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. All the major pyramids that we know about today, not every single one, but the big ones that we know about, Khafra, Khufu, Menkara, uh, Red Pyramid, Maidam Pyramid, Bent Pyramid, those were all built during the fourth dynasty. If you just want to think about pyramids in Egypt, the answer is the fourth dynasty. Um, Snefru built three of these. And finally, on the last one was the Red Pyramid. He actually nailed. The Red Pyramid looks pretty damn close to, they kind of nailed it at that point. But, you know, they messed up a few times with the angles and stuff. They, they, they were figuring this out as they went, you know? Mm. Um, let me build the Sphinx, and then I will get to another question. That's how I should really structure this. I should really do this, and then I should uh, answer a question, and then I should go back to building. I don't know what the most effective way to do this is. <laughs> All right. All right, but we got to build these Sphinx eye. Okay. The 
there was a more advanced culture than the... No, there wasn't. Citation needed on that one. Now, before the Egyptians, there was the Nakwada culture and the Badarian culture before them. But we can look at the... Guys, we can look at the pyramids. We can date the pyramids. We can see when they were built. Or at least, you know, with, within a ballpark, not like an exact year. Like, this pyramid was built on October 1st, 2622 BC, exactly. Like, we can't date it that far, like exact, but pretty good in terms of writings. And it matches up with all the other writings, so no. Yeah. All right. So then, oh man, we're doing a lot of, we're done doing a lot of precision work here today. On these sphinx -i. How is the construction going? Oh, it's going. We're getting there. We're building. Do, 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 do. Uh, what's your opinion on David Tennant coming back? Uh, you know, I'll watch the episodes. I love David Tennant. Um, you know, he's only back for, like, the, the anniversary, and then it's going to be, um, oh, what was his name? Um, uh, Shudi Gatwa, I think. Um, sorry if I mispronounced his name. But uh, I think he's going to do a fantastic job. I just haven't watched Doctor Who that long, and just, like, general, I haven't really watched it. Um, all right. Hold on a second. I need to... Okay. That is so weird. All right. Uh, okay. So, got to do this. And then... Gatwa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his name. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I just haven't been into Doctor Who since uh, Matt Smith. Uh, oh, oh, wait, no. Oh, wait, this one? Oh. Heck, oh, okay, I got it, I got it. A lot of, lot of precision work with these ones. There we go. I guess that's correct. Oh, it moves. Head moves. Check that out. Eh. See? Little sphinx. Ah! Hold on. Yay! <laughs> there we go. Were you a super Hulakian? Uh, I have the first season of Sherlock. I've never watched it. But I have it on DVD. Um, was really into Doctor Who... From when I was a senior in high school till probably like second or third, like until the end of Matt Smith's time as the doctor. That was when I was, uh, I, I, I watched like the first season of Peter Capaldi and it was fine. I just feel like Stephen Moffat, who was the showrunner at the time, he was probably kind of at, he, I think he was kind of running out of gas at that point. Um, I didn't have a problem with Peter Capaldi as a doctor. I thought he was great, but, like, I just thought the stories were a little weaker. And they were repeating a lot of the same plot beats that they always do. Like, the doctor's gonna die! It's like, yeah, he's always gonna die. He's not gonna die. So quit quit trying to play the game like he's gonna die. He's not. It's not gonna happen. No, but for real this time. No, he's not. You did this with David Tennant. You did this with Matt Smith. It's not gonna happen. He's not gonna die. But we really mean it. No, you don't. <laughs> um, season 10 was beyond awful. Um, I, I stopped watching after I got to season 10. I think that's the season I think I watched the first episode of, and I was like, eh, not really doing it for me anymore. And I moved on. I watch a special every now and then. Do you know much about the Sea Peoples? Okay, so the Sea Peoples were a group that, I mean, are somewhat shrouded in mystery. Like, I feel like the simplest explanation is they were just pirates or the group that would later become uh, a group of the Phoenicians. So the Sea Peoples 
were a group that attacked Egypt during um, the New Kingdom. I think while Ramses the Third was the Pharaoh, and um, they caused a little bit of ruckus. They caused some trouble along the coast of the Mediterranean, but uh, eventually got pushed back. And uh, yeah. Hold on, I'm just trying to figure out exactly where to put this thing. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Okay. All right, there we go. Okay. All right. Yeah, so they were called, um, just colloquially, they were known as the Sea Peoples. And uh, they were very good sailors, and they were basically pi pi pri yeah, pirates that attacked Egypt during that time period. All right, cool. So now we got the sphinxes lining this one side here. There's a ghost on the microwave. Whoa, there is. Are we not building more sphinxes? We only have one sphinx? Uh, one set of sphinxes? That's not going to cut the mustard. Oh, I think there actually is. Is there only one set of sphinxes? Oh, there is. I thought there was another one on this side. No, these are all the sphinxes. Okay, cool. Pirates, that won't catch on. Nah, totally not. No way. Pirates are never catching on, guys. Never happening. All right. Your videos are on One Piece or how I distract myself to push through some particularly hard moments in my treatment. Thank you so much. Hey, good luck to you. Hope everything works out okay. <clears throat> I'm about to ship off for boot camp. Well, have fun. <laughs> have fun, buddy. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. See, the key is just do it. Just, just grab random pieces and just throw them together. Don't worry about whether or not it makes sense. There's a hair stuck on this. See, we knocked out that page like that. I know, are you going bald? I don't know why everyone always says I'm going bald. Uh, I'm not. Baldness doesn't run in my family in the slightest. Uh, my hairline receded a little bit, which is normal. Hey, look, man, if, you, uh, if you're 30 or 40 and you still have a lush head of rocker hair, go for it, fantastic. But it's pretty common for hair to kind of recede every once in a while. But yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not going bald. I'm good. No one's going to judge you. I'm like, I'm not going bald. <laughs> it's okay, Tekken. You don't have to reject it. It's fine. Happens to everybody. It's okay. I'm like, it's not happening. My grand... Oh, shit. Buffering. We good? Yeah, I think we're all right. I think we're okay. I think we're all right. I think we're good. Yeah, okay. Your hair looks fine to me. It's fine. It really is. Like, once again, I'd be worried about going bald if baldness was like a hereditary thing in my family. Um, my grandfather, both of my grandfathers were like old and they still had a lush head of hair. My grandfather on my mom's side was 99 and still had to get regular haircuts, okay? He had, he had, like, his hairline was, like, really receded, but he still grew out hair really long. Yeah, it was fine. 
Okay, and I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what I'm building right now, but I'm building it, damn it. Oh, I think this is the placement for, oh, this is the placement for the town, the village, for the builders. If I can get it to hook in, there we go. Things for probably. Yeah. There we go. Teching when he gets gray hair instantly. Yeah, my hair just goes gray. All right, now we're building a town. Yay, town. What's my most nostalgic game? Probably Super Mario World. I, I remember playing a lot of that when I was a kid. My uncle at the time, he's no longer my uncle, but my, my aunt and him got a divorce. But my uncle at the time, he was a guy named Carrie. He gave me my first game system, which was a Super Nintendo, probably when I was like five. He gave me a copy of Super Mario World. And I remember playing that all the time as a kid. And it was an amazing game, and I've played it several times since then. So that's probably the game that I can pretty much play whenever. It's just super nostalgic for me. Keep being me. I will try to. How are you finding the monk class? See, that's a trick to get me to confirm whether or not I'm playing a monk in One Piece D&D Marines. And you know what? I'm not telling you. All right. Okay, so we got to build these little houses here for this uh, the builder's town. All right, so I guess this is probably as good a time as any to bring this topic up. Um, did slaves build the pyramids? This is something that gets brought up quite a bit. Um, of course, uh, probably because of like old school movies and stuff, you, you kind of see the image of a bunch of slaves, you know, like, like a bunch of emaciated slaves pushing giant blocks up of a ramp. And there's like this super buff Egyptian dude, like whipping them with like a cat of nine tails. He's just like, move, move, build, you know, like that's, you know, so did it happen like that? No. It didn't happen like that. But if you would look at the standards for and the, you know, the way that the builders were treated and everything, like if you looked at it from today's, it would be slavery. It would be slavery inscription because the government was. Wow. <laughs> Too much truth. Shit. Maybe, I guess. As soon as I start talking about slavery in ancient Egypt, oh my god, that crashes. <laughs> we back? <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Teching101, totally, here to not talk about slavery in ancient Egypt. It is a topic that I know nothing about. Let us continue building the pyramid that was built completely fairly, 100%, with no instigation whatsoever. Okay. Is Logan Paul your friend? Oh yeah, have drinks with him every night. Had a prime with him last night, easily. Yeah. <laughs> Less Egypt talk, more One Piece talk. I'm literally building a pyramid. Come on, quit talking about Egypt. We're not here for Egypt. We're here to talk about One Piece. I'm like, I'm building a pyramid. <laughs> I love your shirt. Thank you. I love it too. Yeah, it's a good shirt. All right. All right. When, when, where did I cut off here? What, at what point did I cut off? All right. RIP, King Cobra. RIP. It's a little house. Redacted. But it was slavery. Yeah, okay. So, yes. By by modern standards, it was 100% slavery. 
Um, it was a form of, like, military or government conscription, where the government, or a form of tax in the form of labor. Now, they did pay them in food and beer and lodgings, and little towns would pop up around the pyramid construction site like I'm building right now. And these towns would begin to have their own economy. Um, it's very important to understand, though, because if you just look at it from that... Hold up. Okay, we're back. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, important information redacted. Okay, that is the second time now in this stream that we're talking about slavery. Uh, but anyway, I noticed someone say, it's that's not slavery, that's the corvée system. Now, the corvée system is very con controversial in its own right because the corvée system is, is basically, in, in lieu of taxes, we're going to conscript you to do labor. And in a lot of people's minds, that's slavery. And I have to agree with that, because it's like, it's not slavery. Now build that temple, or, to, or you know, we're going to tax you heavily. Or, you know, there's going to be problems for you dodging taxes or something. And you know what? The corvée system was actually, um, it, it was active in Egypt up until like 1890. It was not something that only existed in ancient Egypt and then fell out of vogue after the Romans or the Greeks took over. No, corvée system was legit up until 1890. And then the British who were in control of Egypt at the time were kind of like, all right, no, this is a form of slavery. We're getting away from this, you know? Yeah, yeah, pay, pay that temple or face taxes. Okay, but something else to really keep in mind with this is like if you were told to build a skyscraper today, and we're only going to pay you in beer and food. You'd look at that and be like, no, that's horrible. That I can't do anything with that. Pay me in money or I'm not doing it. It's important to keep in mind back in ancient Egypt, they didn't have money. At least not in the way that you and I have money. They had no paper money. Uh, excuse me. They didn't have coinage. They didn't have coins. They did eventually get coins later. Um, in, in when the Greeks were in control, they had some coins in ancient Egypt. But at this point, when the pyramids were being built, no, nah, man, they didn't have anything like that. Um, so it was pretty much just the bartering system. And you could trade food and beer for other goods. Like, that's when you went to a market, they weren't accepting coins and paper money. They were accepting other things. So it's like you get paid in beer. You can go to the market that would spring up in this little community and you'd be like, hey, I need a new shirt, or I need a cow, or I need something else. You'd be like, all right, give me three jugs of beer, and I'll give you this. They also used grain. Grain was also kind of a currency in a way. There's price lists that we've discovered that literally say this much grain in exchange for a, a shirt, this much grain in exchange for a new cow, um, or building materials, or whatever they would have, pottery, stuff like that. Um, so it's important to keep in mind that there was a bartering system. But if we're just looking at it from the sense of, like, the government was forcing them to kind of build these structures, um, and they weren't allowed to go home until the end of the inundation period, so after three months of building the pyramids, then they were allowed to go back home and continue farming. Keep in mind, Egypt was also an agrarian culture, which was all about food production. Food production had a lot more importance back then. I mean, it is important now, but like really important back then because we didn't have all the modern conveniences back then. They didn't have tractors or various ways to, to sow crops and things. Um, not approving of it, I'm just saying to you that there's a reason why a lot of early civilizations had slave labor. Now, on top of that, Egypt also had war slaves. They would go to Nubia all the time and they would conquer Nubia and they would bring the Nubians from Kush back to Egypt as war slaves. Uh, there was indentured servitude, where if you accrued debt to somebody, then you could basically pay that off by serving them for an X amount of time, and then afterwards you would be um, you know, free of your debt. These are all forms of slavery. They had a form of chattel slavery. Now, was slavery in ancient Egypt as bad as, like, antebellum slavery in the south in the u.s like prior to the civil war i think those two systems are completely night and day for one thing that was way later 
when the transatlantic slave trade had happened and it was more of an industry and it was much more racially charged during the period before the civil war um slaves were treated it was and it was it's a, an abomination upon nature the way that they were treated okay all slavery is bad but slavery during that period pre-civil war was like the worst of the worst of the worst of it okay slavery during this period was much more about build this temple to your god and everybody believed in that god so it was like all right i guess we'll build this temple to our god if we build the temple then more food will be produced because the gods will be happy kind of silly now but that was a serious motivating factor for these people everybody believed in the egyptian gods there was no alternative so it's like, hey, you want me to build this temple because it'll make the gods happy and I get free food and beer and a place to stay? I would say if you went back to ancient Egypt and you spoke to an Egyptian that was building this pyramid and you asked them, do you feel like a slave? I don't think they would say so. But by modern standards, they would most certainly have been considered that. Yeah. Yeah. Roman slavery was pretty bad, too. Well, okay. Also, you got to keep in mind, we have more reliable records from the way that slaves were treated during the South in, in the antebellum period than we do Roman slaves. Like, like there are records, but that was, like, over 2,000 years ago. Maybe it was worse. Maybe it was. Um, but, yeah, it certainly wasn't great. Hmm. I actually haven't read a lot about Roman slavery. It might have been way worse. But slavery during the South, I have read a lot about that, and it was pretty goddamn abhorrent. Yeah. But anyway, so that's that topic. I knew that would come up at some point, so I was like, all right, well, you know, we have to mention that. I mean, it's part of Egyptian history. It is. No part of history should ever be censored or overlooked or glossed over it's all history all of it and needs to be addressed equally now if i know about it if i feel like i can talk about it in the sense of like i've read about it and i can actually give you a sense of like i know what i'm talking about then i can talk about it basically all right one two three four five six okay six of these got those and then we're gonna do Three of these type. House tour. Not tonight. But thanks for asking. Do 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 See, Wizards of the Coast Pinkerton scandal. See, I have no idea what that even is, so I can't talk about it. Thank you for being honest about history. Hey, man, it's history. It is what it is. I will also say this. The Egyptians did have a penchant for uh, omitting things from history if they did not fit their over... If it did not make them look good. Now... The reason for them doing this, keep in mind, they lived in a very superstitious time period. So they were under the idea that if they were to write something down, then that basically confirms it to the universe and to the gods of Egypt that it happened. So it, if something happened that doesn't paint the Egyptians in a great light or something they took dishonor in, they didn't write it down. Or they tried to scrub it from the history books because if they wrote it down, then they felt like the gods would know like it's acknowledging that they committed this deed. And then so there are some spots in Egyptian history for that reason. A lot of it we've been able to recover. Like the story of Akhenaten is probably the most famous one there. And that's a story that I can get into now if you'd like. Or we can wait a while depending because I just told a story. I know a lot of too much history can kind of overload you. I understand. But I do want to tell that story because it's probably one of the more famous stories of ancient Egypt. Okay. Building little houses. Get into the story now! Now, Techie, now! <laughs> okay, shit. I'm sorry, Arnold. 
I'm sorry. Let me, oh, let me finish these two houses first. Um, very, I'm almost done with this bag. No more history. Now, did you mean no more history or no more history? Oh, that was supposed to be Arnold? Yeah, that was supposed to be Arnold. You've never talked in the Arnold system? The Corvée system? You mean capitalistic America? Okay, so I've been watching a YouTuber that's all about the economy. Uh, that's where I actually watch the Egyptian economy system, so go watch that. Uh, I forget what the guy's name is. So just type in Egypt economy. It's probably going to be the first result. He's a pretty popular YouTuber. Uh, somebody comment. It's like an EE. -E. It's like something economics, whatever. Um, and, and then you start getting into the question of like, okay, is paying taxes a form of slavery? And it's like, I'm not going there. Okay. That's where I'm drawing the line on that. Okay. It is like, that's something that you have to decide. All right. I don't think it is. I don't think simply paying taxes because you get to a point where it's like, and he even did a video on this. He did a whole video on, on do we need to pay taxes? And it, it, it's dealing with economic um, theories that I, I understood watching the video, but me trying to give you a secondhand account of it now is going to come out like gibberish. So go watch that. Economic Explained. That's it. Go type in Economics Explained. And there's a video he made on do we need to pay taxes as a society. He explains it very well. And I, I, at the end of it, I, I felt like, yes, you do. Because, you know, at this point of society, yes, there are some alternatives. But you can kind of see how it's a cyclical. At, at the end of the day, it's a cyclical thing where most other systems would eventually kind of circle back to taxation anyway. But go check out that video I would recommend that rather than me sitting here trying to recap the video, which I've only watched like once, and I would not do a great job at that. So there you go. All right, now we're going to place little houses. Look, 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 these all little houses. Actually, let me put the houses in, and then I'll show you the, uh, the town. Um, yeah. Do you want to do that now? I mean, it's like a 30-minute video. If you want to watch it now and then come back and see where we're at, go ahead. I don't mind. Hmm. Okay, got to place these houses down now. All right, that goes here. See, this is one of those things I really don't think it matters where you place the house. Because it's like, the whole point is a town. Oh, see, I messed that up already. But it's okay. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. There, it's that house. And then this house goes here. Yes. And then this house goes here. I love building with Legos. I'm actually having a lot of fun right now. Saul Goodman, absolutely. I love that show. I think it had a pretty good ending. No spoilers for those of you who haven't watched it, but pretty solid show. If you need something to watch, you're looking for something brand new, Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul will not do you wrong. Okay, we got one more house, and it's way over. There's one house that's, like, way over here. Why is this house all the way over here, huh? Okay, that's pretty cool. Check that out. Oh, we're dropping frames again. Hold on. So this is my little, uh... So at level here, oh. we got the Nile River here, and we got this little village. We're going to put some foliage and greeneries in here to make it look a little better.
POV where are Lego figures? I've been smoking the ganja. Okay, um, you know what? I think we're done with this bag. That took us an hour and a little bit over an hour. Well, actually, I didn't start right away, so probably like an hour and 10 minutes to get that bag done. That was bag three. Uh, there's eight, <laughs> so there you go. Um, I have some extra pieces here. Uh, yeah, we're moving on to bag four. All right. Bag four. Just throwing all these on the floor. I'll get those later. These are extra pieces that I don't want to get confused. So I'm going to put these somewhere else. Have I seen Twin Peaks? No, but I play Deadly Premonition, which is basically the same thing. Uh, all right, bag four. It's 420 somewhere. All right. Okay. All right. Bag four doesn't actually look that bad. Bag four does not look that scary. And we're going to need... These are all the trees. See all the trees? And then these are all the plant life that is not trees. Uh, I think this is... Oh, look! Little stairs! Uh, you can't see it, but that's why we have this other camera. Look at that. Yay! <laughs> well, I'll check out the scandal about the TCG thing, but not right at this moment. All right. Let's try to get through this pack faster. Let's let's do this quick. Let's get through this one fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, faster. Okay. All right, we're gonna need three of these. Let's do this. Two of those. And these things go on here. Okay, that's good. Little piece on top. Good. And then two of these pieces. Oh, oh, how's this go? Oh, no, it goes that way. I was right. Oh my god, why isn't it staying? Weird. Huh. Oh, oh, no, no, I did go that way. I'm an idiot. Wait, no. That is not how it's supposed to go. Not in the picture. This is what happens when you go fast. This is why Sonic never built a pyramid. Hang right, on. Nope, oh, yeah. Oh, I got it. I got it. We're good. Suck it, Sonic. You're just a hedgehog. Hedgehogs can't build pyramids. Now, Knuckles, Echidnas? Echidnas could build a sweet pyramid. All right, how many of these do I need? Just one? All right. Oh, it goes, oh, this is like the, oh, this is like the entrance to the, oh, that's cool. There we go. That's nifty. Yeah. I don't know anything about uh, Brazilian mythology, unfortunately. That's another one that I've never looked into yet. As of yet. I, I know I will get into it at some point in my life, absolutely. But not yet. Okay. There we go. Whoa! Trying to get this incorrectly. Ah, it's gonna be, okay. All right, I just have to be careful with this piece. Oh, I have to build stuff underneath it. All right, sure, I guess. The 
So are we going to burn this sucker down like Rome? Uh, you might want to... You might want to look at history there, guys. The, the Great Pyramid of Giza, that's still there. You're thinking of the Library of Alexandria. They burned down Alexandria, which was a couple couple hundred miles north of where these were. Yeah, the Great Pyramid is still there. You can go look at it. It originally had limestone around it, and the, the, um, the Pyramidian, which was the apex of the pyramid, had a golden capstone on it. It would have looked marvelous during its day. I mean, if you could have time-traveled back to when these were built, it would have looked amazing. It would have looked completely different. They took all the limestone off for other projects over the years, um... You know, and then eventually, like, even later on, they were, the pyramids were sacked and broken into, um, unfortunately, all in antiquity. But they would have looked, they would have been a sight to see in their, in their prime. What we see now is just their husks. It's like if you went up to a really nice looking house, but then stripped all the siding off of it and all the paint, and then you just saw the raw underbelly of the house. And uh, that's basically what the pyramids are right now. Stop talking about history teching. You might get Buster called. All right, that's a that's the first genuine concern there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes, the Muslims did do it. Yeah, they broke into the pyramid a few times. There was a. Um, Oh, who was it? There was a sultan that did it. Uh, but that wasn't the only person. I mean, there was a lot of times they got broken in throughout history. Yeah. The Persians, yeah. The Persians controlled Egypt for a time. And then the Egyptians fought back and they won their freedom for 50 years. And then the Persians came back. And then Alexander the Great showed up. And then after that, he died. And then it was under the control of the Greeks after that. Oh, I know what we're building now. We're building Khufu's family's pyramid. Yeah, Khufu's family got pyramids too. They weren't as extravagant as his, but they, they did get pyramids. It was cool to be buried in a pyramid. If you were going to be buried in a pyramid in ancient Egypt, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big hullabaloo. Once again, keep in mind, these people all believed in the afterlife. This was not a situation like today where it's like, you know, some people believe, and, you know, it's like, I think, of what is it, like, Christianity is, like, I think it was, like, 60-something percent in America, and then it's, like, 25-something, 30 percent that are atheist or non-religious, and it's, like, 4 percent for every other religion in the U.S. Back then, it's, like, everybody believes in the afterlife, so, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do in order to uh, make sure you're gonna go to a nice place when you die. You know, it was, it was, there was no science in that traditional sense back then of like, oh, why does this stuff happen? It just happens. Nobody knew why it rained. Nobody knew what the sun was. It was just these stories that people just went with because there was no other alternative. You know, it was, it would be a very different time to live in. Very different time. It is, what do you got? Not a single mummy has ever been found in a pyramid. Uh, well, most of them were robbed in antiquity. Uh, there was a arm. There was a mummified arm that was found in one of the pyramids. I don't know if it was Khufu's or Khafra's. Probably what ha it was uh, found behind like a staircase. Probably what happened was some grave robbers broke in a long time ago, stole the mummy, and then part of the arm fell off and it fell behind, like in a crack behind the stairs. And they're like, shit. And they're like, ah, don't worry about it. It's going to be, just go. And then they got out. And that's, that's probably what happened. So they have found mummified remains. Also King Tut, though he wasn't born, he wasn't buried in a pyramid, but it was a burial site. But yeah, uh, the pyramids were sacked plenty of times. Um, there are these giant structures that loom over Giza that are like these shining beacons to grave robbers. Hey, break into these giant, obvious triangles in the middle of the desert. You'll probably get some cool shit. And they did. Got to keep in mind, these pyramids were built like... Like, by the time King Tut lived, the pyramids were well over a thousand years old. 
by the time Cleopatra lived, the pyramids were well over 2,500 years old. Okay? So by the time of the Vikings, they were 3,000 years old. You know what I mean? Like, there were so many ch chances for people to sack these things in ancient times. Yeah. And then eventually you have, you know, people that came later during the Napoleon campaign in Egypt. And then that set off this Egyptian craze where people would, like, steal mummies and just show them off in fancy parties during the Victorian era. You can watch Blue Jay's video on that. He did a really good video on that. Yeah, Cleopatra is closer to our time than the time of the pyramids, or she's closer to the time of the iPhone. Or one t The weirdest one I ever saw was Cleopatra lived closer to the creation of Pizza Hut <laughs> than to the pyramids, which is true, but it's a weird way to phrase that. It's like Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of Sour Patch Kids Watermelon than she did the pyramids. I'm like, that's true, but it's a weird thing to specifically point out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How old are the pyramids of Giza? Uh, built somewhere around 2700 to 2600 BC. So that's, let's just say 2600 years to the year zero. There wasn't a year zero, but you know what I mean. So 2600 years there to get to that point, And then another 2023 years to get up to where we're at now. So pretty damn close to 5,000 years, uh, probably like 4,006, 4,700 years, something like that, that this one was built. There were pyramids before this, like um, Djoser's Stepped Pyramid. Before pyramids, they would build um, these things called mastabas, which were basically single-tiered uh, stepped pyramids. And then with a stepped pyramid, they just kept stacking more mastabas on top of them. So you get like a step thing, like the Mayan civilization built those. And then eventually they resorted to the, the, the actual pyramid shape. Before mastabas, they would just bury their dead in graves in the desert. Um, the desert would do most of the work. It was another reason why Egypt flourished the way it did. Um, you know, dealing with a lot of dead bodies, uh, dealing with how you're going to bury your dead... That was an issue in a lot of European nations, especially during times of plague. Um, you had to make sure to bury your dead in a place where they weren't going to infect the water or they weren't going to cause flies or other plague to spread. Um, it was a serious problem. But not in Egypt. Because of the weather, you could essentially just go out in the desert, bury somebody in the dirt, not even that deep. And the desert's going to do most of the work. You know, uh, there's not going to be a lot of, there's not going to be bugs or anything. It's just going to dry the fucking thing out. It's going to be a husk. And then you're there, you're done. Eventually just return to the earth, you know. Egypt really lucked out when it came to location. Geography is everything. Um, the oasis, the regular inundations of the Nile flooding just enough to provide nutrients to the soil, but not enough to actually ruin places like the Yellow River in ancient China. That thing flooded all the time and killed so many people, and it was unpredictable. They didn't know when the Yellow River was going to flood. It would just flood and wipe out entire towns. The Nile flooded regularly. Um, it was uh, late August to September to November. The floodwaters would rise just enough to immerse the fields to deposit black silt to get everything kind of like the nutrients of the seabed. And then around November, the floodwaters would recede. And then the planting season would take place. And then the harvesting season would take place around springtime. And then after that, in the summer, the ground would then be cleared and the sun would bake it like an Egyptian summer, very hot. It would bake the soil, sterilizing it, and then it would flood again. And then that was the cycle every year. That was very, very uh, predictable. They knew this. They were farming on easy mode, basically. After the, after the fields were flooded and it was basically mud, um, the original name for Egypt, because Egypt is another name we get from the Greeks. They did not call their culture Egypt. If you went back to the time of Khufu and, and asked him what land you ruled over, he would not say Egypt. That was a word that was created later by Manetho, who was a Greek historian. He wrote a book called the Egyptica. Uh, A-E-G-Y-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P-T-I-C-A-P
Kemet just means land of the black soil, land of the black mud, land of the black earth. Uh, more referring to um, Lower Egypt, which is where the Mediterranean Delta was, where a lot of this soil would deposit and it would be black earth. That you could just, you could take wheat and grain and just throw it out in the fields and just walk over it. I mean, it would grow so easily. It, yeah, there you go. That's the way it was spelled. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Mm. Look, little, little, little sarcophagi. Um, so yeah, man, that's that's the way they did it. That's the way they did it. Yep. That's the way to do it. I'm burying Khufu's parents right now, <laughs> or his sister, or his brother, or whoever. Khufu's, um, I don't know if Khufu's father was Sneferu. Sneferu was the pharaoh before him, so he probably was. A lot of pharaohs in Egypt. And you know what? You know what? Honestly, there's so much information we don't know about Egypt, guys. So much stuff. I mean, when we got our hands on the, uh, the Rosetta Stone, that was a huge help. But, like, if you just go on the list of, like, kings in Egypt on, like, Wikipedia, dude, there's so much blacked out that we just don't know about. It's still a very mysterious culture. It's a culture that lived for two, three thousand, over three thousand years. I mean, even before Egypt was unified by Narmer, you had pre-dynastic dynasty zero. I mean, you still had a lot of stuff going on. Like by the time the first dynasty was happening, Narmer, he's one of the three great pharaohs that unified the land. Um, so he unifies the land of Upper and Lower Egypt, makes it one nation around 3150 BC, and that's what kicks off the first dynasty. But before that, like Horus and Osiris and Ra, these gods were already established. Egypt existed before the first dynasty in Upper and Lower. There was the um, the red crown of Upper Egypt and the white crown of Lower Egypt. Also to keep in mind, the Lower Egypt was to the north and Upper Egypt was to the south because they didn't know north and south. They went by the way that it flowed, the Nile River. So the Nile River flowed down, you know, through Lower Egypt into, I mean, through Upper Egypt down into the Mediterranean, which was Lower Egypt, though it was more north on the map. Just how it goes. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Little sarcophagi. Sarcophagi, maker of a sarcophagi. That was a fun video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. All right. All right, now we're going to put the capstones on these things. All right, everybody, get a good look at the coffins. They are never going to be open again. That's another thing, too. Like, the idea for a tomb like this was that once these things are sealed, they were never intended to be opened again. Now, obviously, people sack them, grave robbers, even Egyptians themselves, when they needed building materials, they would take them off of pre-existing structures. Because it's like, oh, man, we need to build this new temple. How are we going to build it? We can go to the quarry and mine a bunch of stuff. Yeah, or we could just use this giant temple that was built a thousand years ago. Could just take rocks off of that and just move it over here. They did that shit all the time. But, um, you know, if they were supposed to be operated as intended, these things were never supposed to be opened again. That's why a lot of information we go into, we find them written in hieroglyphics that they tried to scrub from history because they would remove stuff from their lists of things, like their lists of kings and shit. Uh, I have to get to the story with Akhenaten. That's what I was trying to get to. And this is a good way to loop back around to it. But um, once you go into the tombs, we find all this information and it's right there, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's plain as day. You can just read it. Uh, oh, these are in here. Okay. Ancient vandalism. Um... Oh, what's funny about that is the, the teams that would build, the builders of the pyramids actually would name their companies. Like, so we found in Menkara's pyramid, which is the smallest of the three great pyramids, uh, we actually found like 
graffiti or kind of like like company names sort of speak like one of them is like we were you know we were in the name of menkara we built this we were the eyes of the pharaoh or something there was another group that were like we were the drunks of menkara the drunks of menkara built this section of his pyramid you know what i mean like they they were kind of like naming themselves as a group so it just kind of goes to show people have been doing that kind of stuff throughout history man you know it's like we got to come up with a cool name People will remember the six of us that built... I mean, not the six of us. It was a lot of people. But it's like people will remember the, the company that built that section of Menkara's pyramid. We were the drunks of Menkara. We are just boozing all night long. Lug, lug, lug. Yeah. Yeah. The first boy bands. Kinda. Yeah, kinda, man. They were dropping their ats. Yeah, they were like, yeah, we were the ones that built this. Yeah. <laughs> Hey man, you gotta you gotta mark what is like, hey man, we built this thing. People gotta know who built this particular section of Menkara's pyramid. People are gonna wanna know our names. This is gonna go down in history. And they were right. They were right. Ye old gamer tags. Yeah, they, it was basically. I wish I could remember some of the other ones. I remember the drunks of Menkara because that one just kind of stands out. Some were more lamer names. Some were very just like we were the, you know, the alms of the Pharaoh or something like that. Or they wouldn't have been called Pharaohs back then, but you know. So there we go. There are the pyramids of Khufu's family. And we just place them right here. There we go. Town pyramids. First copyright, too. Yeah. <laughs> you go and actually, no, he actually did. In Khufu's chamber where he's buried, there's three chambers in the in the pyramid. We're actually gonna build three of them. It's really cool. But there's uh, his chamber, and on the roof of his chamber just says Khufu. So he kind of like, he's like, yeah, copyright Khufu, my pyramid. Later, everybody. You know, <laughs> she's like, yeah. Remarkably, we only have one piece of um, art that depicts what Khufu even looked like. It, it's a tiny little ivory figure, and that's it. We have no other art of him. I mean, we don't know. That's another thing, too. We don't know, like, there's some pharaohs on the list. Like, that pharaoh could have been that pharaoh, could have been that pharaoh. So, like, all three of these guys could have been the same person. Or they could have been three separate people. We don't know. There's so much we don't know. Okay. Uh, are we doing, what are we doing? Ooh, we're doing a top-down view now. Ooh, we're building trees. Okay. Oh, man, we got a lot of stuff to put on this one. Okay. Hold on. No, 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 no. Don't fall off the table. Please. I will never find you. My carpet is like a brown color, too. It's like you can kind of see it, like right here. So it's like brown and white, and these are brown pieces. So I'm not finding these. All right. It's crazy that you're a better history teacher than my actual history teacher. Maybe your history teacher didn't want to be a history teacher. That might be the problem. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I'm also allowed to tell the history however I want, like, in terms of, like, cursing. So I'm like, man, you should hear the fucking stories about the Egyptians. You know, like, the time that... Okay, I'll tell the story now. Um, all right. So, 18th... It's the. I'll set the stage for you, all right? It's the 18th dynasty of Egypt. Uh, it's the beginning of the New Kingdom. The Hyksos, which were these... Uh, invaders from their own empire up in anatolia they have just been kicked out of egypt by amos the first pretty cool dude he uh expelled the hyksos and he was another one of one of the great unifiers of egypt um that kind of forged a good time of prosperity so flash forward a couple hundred years later and there's a pharaoh by the name of amenhotep the fourth now amenhotep the fourth was the son of, Th of Thutmose the Third? There was a period. A lot of 18th dynasty's pharaohs were Thutmose or are um, Amenhotep. It was like Amenhotep the First had a son named 
Thutmose the first, and then Thutmose the first had a son named Thutmose the second, and then Thutmose the second had Amenhotep the third, or second, and then Amenhotep the second had Amenhotep the third, and then Thutmose the third. There, there were four of each. There were four Amenhoteps, and there were four Thutmoses. Okay, just this happened a lot. All right, what are you going to do? So there's a guy named Amenhotep the fourth. Okay, he's the star of this story. He becomes the pharaoh, and he decides, you know what I'm going to do. Uh, you know how Egypt is kind of polytheistic and we've had a bunch of gods, like literally hundreds, maybe thousands of gods over the course of thousands of years of history? Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of all that. I'm just going to get rid of all the gods and I'm going to whittle them down to one. We're going to have one god now. And his name's going to be Aten. And uh, I'm going to change my name from Amenhotep IV to Ankhenaten, uh, Glory of Aten, A-T-E-N, Aten. And uh, I'm going to be the only guy that can listen and understand Aten. And so I'm the one that gets to call all the shots. And I'm going to close down all the temples. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of be, I'm going to build a new capital called Amarna that's going to be all based around Aten. Because he was a big fan of this god Aten. Now, as you can imagine, a lot of people were not fans of this because, like I said, very superstitious people. And you basically, in one fell swoop, made their religion illegal. Um, you're not allowed to worship these gods. You're not allowed to worship, especially not Amun-Ra. That son of a bitch, Amun-Ra. After the Hyksos were expelled from Egypt is when Amun became one with Ra because it was very important to the lore that it was due to the glory of Amun-Ra, of Amun, that they expelled the Hyksos. They got rid of the invaders thanks to Amos and Amun. So Amun became one with Ra. And so the cult of Amun-Ra was very prominent in Egypt at this time. There were a lot of these religious priests and stuff that, that preached Amun-Ra, and their power began to rival the power of the pharaohs. Akhenaten was fearful of this, and so he was like, oh, hell no, I'm going to shut down this before it gets started. I'm shutting down the temples to Amun-Ra. I'm shutting down all the other temples. You're not worshiping Bast. You're not worshiping Sobek. You're not worshiping Mat. You're worshiping Aten, and you're worshiping me and nothing else. A little bit about Aten himself. Aten, when it comes to the cool array of badass Egyptian gods... You got jackal face, you got crocodile head, you got the cat lady, you know, you got Osiris, lord of the underworld, you got the sun god, Ra, you got all these really bad, you got Slifer, the sky dragon, you have Exodia, the forbidden one, you got Obelisk, who torments, you got all these really badass Egyptian gods. Meanwhile, Aten is a floating disc in the sky. He's basically a glowing frisbee. That's a basically what Aten is. He's not the coolest god, all right? He's pretty, pretty boring. Granted, he is a glowing disc in the sky. That's kind of cool, but he's not really much else beyond that. Uh, and, and they go from all... How would you feel if you went from worshiping badass crocodile face to a disc <laughs> you know it's like there's not much to go on there and a beetle you can worship a beetle god you know <laughs> just like yeah i'm just listing off the jojo stands you know thoth there's no more thoth you know <laughs> i kind of am though uh yo <sighs> dissing the gods i think the reason akhenaten picked aten was because he knew it was a god that didn't really have a lot going for it, so he can kind of project whatever he wanted onto that god. Um, so that probably was the reason. Now, Aten granted, like I said, the Egyptians had a lot of Egypt had a lot of uh, sun deities. There wasn't just one sun deity. It wasn't just Ra. They had all these different versions. Aten represented the physical shape of the sun in the sky, because when the Egyptians, when you look up at the sun, it's, well, what do you see? I mean, you can't look at it very long, but when the sun is setting or it's rising and you can kind of look at it without getting blind, what is it? It's a circle. It's a disc that floats through the sky. And so they had a name for that. It's like the physical entity of the disc was Aten, okay? 
So that's what Amenhotep, that's what Amenhotep IV, Akhenaten, did. And he moved the capital to a place called Amarna, and he built that there, and he started building his civilization, and nobody really liked it, but he's the pharaoh, so what are you going to do? You'd think this story would end with um, with um, Akhenaten being violently murdered in his own temple. Like, a bunch of the people rise up against him and pick up swords and, like, kopesh blades, and they're just like, You are not a real pharaoh, Akhenaten. You have betrayed the gods of Egypt. You have betrayed Amun-Ra. You will die! Charge! Charge! I praise Aten! Ah! Uh, did I ever play Assassin's Creed Origin? No, I haven't. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the alternate ending. Yeah, that's the alternate ending. Now, that would have been badass. No, don't get me wrong. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> that was great. Enacting the, the possible death of Akhenaten. No. Akhenaten, I, I think he just died. I mean, he might have died of like a disease or something, which was common, but he he didn't get murdered. He didn't get there wasn't some violent uprising, even though the people were against him. That was also the position the Pharaoh had. Even if he was doing shit that you didn't like, he's the voice of the gods. He's literally the intermediary between the, the spirit realm and your realm. He's kind of like the avatar. Honestly, the pharaoh kind of was, in some senses, the avatar of Egypt, the border, the bridge between worlds. Um, okay, so, whoa, <laughs> hold on, let me make sure I got all these put in. Uh, okay, there's a couple more here I need to put in. I need to put one in here, and put one in here. Okay, I got that one, I got that one. There's just a lot of these, and then there's these green ones I need to put in. Um, let's see. Okay, so he didn't die. He didn't get murdered, but he did die, as as it happens. You know, eventually, if you live, you die. Uh, Otten couldn't save him on that one, could he? So he dies, and then his son takes over. And Akhenaten's son is probably, it's definitely a name you've heard before. He, he is probably the single most famous pharaoh in all of Egyptian history. Not because he did anything crazy, it's just because his tomb was the one that was found completely intact. And uh, that's the reason why. So with that all being said, who was Akhenaten's son that succeeded him as pharaoh? I'm letting you know in advance, even my mother could get this answer. And my mom does not care much about history. <clears throat> His name was Pharaoh Atem. Yes, it was Pharaoh Atem. Um, no, it was, yes, it was King Tut. It was, Ramses is a good option too, but King Tut is more famous just because everybody knows King Tut. Go to, go up to anybody on the street and ask, give me the name of an Egyptian Pharaoh and if they don't watch Yu-Gi-Oh, their first thing is going to be King Tut. Okay, yeah, so it's, Tink, it's King Tut or Toontank Common. However, that was actually not his birth name. He was not born Toontank Kamun because, like I said, Amun is in his name. Akhenaten was his dad. He's not going to name his son after his mortal enemy, Amun. So King Tut's original name when he was born was Toontank Aten. It had Aten in the name. But as he grew up and his father died and King Tut became the pharaoh, he was a, he was known as the boy king. He was young. He was only like 18 or 19 when he died. And he ruled for like 10 years. So he became king when he was like 8 or 9 years old. I mean, he was he was a kid when he, when he ruled. Um, but he changed his name. He changed his name from uh, Aten to Amun. So Tutank Amun. Tutank Amun. And then King Tut is just the version we... I mean, he wasn't called that back then. Hey, King Tut, how you doing? Ah, doing all right, brah. Don't worry about it. Hey, you gonna open up those temples? Your dad was a dick. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it, brah. 
See, my dad, yeah, he doesn't understand the way we live our lives. I'm going to open up those temples. We can worship Sobek all night long, man. Don't worry about it. We're bringing back the crocodile god. We're bringing back Amun Ra. Dude, I even changed my name. I'm not Aten anymore. I'm Two Tank Amun because King, I mean, uh, Amun Ra, man, he saved our country. You know? That's how it goes. Catch you later on the flip. <laughs> Just like, there it is. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what happened. Um, he changed everything. Changed. <laughs> he changed everything back to the way it was. He opened up all the temples again. And, um, you know, he brought back all the deities. Amarna, which was, like I said, the city that Akhenaten built, uh, began to fall into disrepair. They kind of just abandoned it. It's still there. The site is still there. I don't know if you can visit it. I don't know if it's, like, off-limits to tourists. But it is there. It is an archaeological site. So that's how we know this story. It happened. But, unfortunately, the storybooks aren't... I mean, King Tut, it ended up working out for King Tut specifically because we found his tomb. Howard Carter found his tomb in 1922 that was just never touched. It was sealed perfectly. No one ever grave robbed it. So because of that, and it was a relatively smaller tomb, and it was supposed to be somebody else's tomb. It wasn't even supposed to be his. But um, they found his tomb, and it was untouched. And so that, fi that finding of all of that gold and grave goods and his burial mask, which is famous, it's like every book on Egyptian history has Toontan Common's burial mask right there on the front of it. I have another one too. Look. Ugh. See? Yeah. It's the most identifiable piece of Egyptian. Yeah. So that's that. So, oh yeah, you know what? I forgot I had this. The Millennium Ring. I was going to get this for Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was playing the Destiny board deck against Briggs. Check that out. The Millennium Ring. Don't put it on, Tekken. You'll be possessed by Zork. Yeah, that's all well and good, teching, but where does Zork come into play in all this story? There we go. Ha-ha. <sighs> so, um, yeah, now King Tut, like I said, eventually the history books got to know him. And like I said, he died when he was relatively young. Uh, when they found him in the tomb, his leg was really badly mangled. It was probably the reason why he died. Um, most likely he got into some kind of accident. Uh, there was a chariot that was found in his tomb. So the idea is maybe he was in a chariot accident. He was like 18, 19 years old, mangled his leg, probably got an infection, maybe gangrene. And he died from that. Uh, also side note, he had a cleft lip. That's just a thing we know. So, you know, he ended up in the history books. So everything kind of worked out well for King Tut. We remember him probably better than most Edward Pharaoh. However... At the time this was going on, the way, like I said, they don't like to put stuff down in the history books that doesn't paint them in the greatest light. And this was certainly one of those moments uh, where they had a pharaoh that removed all of the gods from the temples. They're not going to admit to that. So even though King Tut took over and opened up all the temples again, they don't want to mention anything about that story in the actual histories, okay? Okay. After King Tut died, the Grand Vizier, I the Second, took over. I, as in A-Y. A-Y the Second. He took over because there was nobody else. King Tut did not have a child. This chain is very itchy. I'm going to take this off. I might have to replace this chain. We'll set it right here. Ah, uh, yes. There we go. But, um, so the Grand Vizier took over after King Tut. And then after the Grand Vizier, there was a pharaoh called Horemheb. And Horemheb, his story is so cool. I think it's cooler than King Tut's. Horemheb was born as a commoner. He was born a commoner on the lower stratus of the caste system as a peasant. He rose through the ranks, became a military leader, the equivalent of a general, and then became pharaoh. 
He, his story is way more fascinating than the story of King Tut's or Akhenaten's, in my opinion. It's the story of somebody literally going from like rags to riches, literally working and dedicating themselves and then building themselves up through their pedigree and eventually reaching the, the, the highest title in the land. But unfortunately, they, wrote, they, they scrubbed all of that shit from the history books. At least they tried to. They, they, we still know about it, obviously, because we have archaeological evidence. But they didn't write any of this down when they were making the list because they would keep track of the kings. They would keep like a king list, like the Turin. It's called the Turin Canon, um, where they have a bunch of lists of all the kings. They omitted every king, I think from, I don't know if they omitted Akhenaten's father. They might have. That was Tuthmos, that was Tuthmos the third who, by the way, was very prominent. He was a really, really uh, powerful ruler. I think it was one of the moments when Egypt was at its strongest was under Thutmose III. So I don't know if they uh, scrubbed him from the record, but they definitely scrubbed Akhenaten, King Tut, I the Second, and Horemheb. They all got white. And then you just start... After Horemheb, he was the last pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, and then you just start with the 19th dynasty. Okay, now we know all this information because it was in the tombs that were never supposed to be opened, but we did. And then, oh, this is King Tut. Oh, this is his story. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Okay, so now we know. All right, time for some trees. Going to put some trees out here. Time for some foliage. Foliage, foliage? Yes. Okay. How are we doing this? Tree, 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 tree. Wait. Oh, tree. 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 All right, this side now. Uh, tree, tree, tree. Oh wait, I missed one. Sorry, silly me. Uh, okay, tree, tree. What did I miss another one? Uh, I did. Tree. 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 Nope, oh, nope, that's the wrong color tree. Although that goes here. Different tree. Regular tree. Tree. Double tree, single tree. Okay. Now for the different colored trees. Uh, tree. 
tree. Tree under other trees. Hmm. I'm going to have to remove this tree so I can put in another tree. <laughs> Dollar tree. All right, that's that's enough of that. Even even that was getting kind of annoying. Sorry about that. I apologize for that. You could just skip past that part of the stream, and then you wouldn't want to watch the recording. <laughs> uh, yep. You know, there were a lot of trees in ancient Egypt, man. That was the thing. There was a location in Egypt. It's called the Fayum Peninsula. Uh, you can look at it on the map. It's like part of the Nile that like juts out like a little extension of the oasis. Like it's like here's the Nile and then like a, one random part. It's just like extending. That's the Fayum Peninsula. Very relevant to at least the Romans. That's where a lot of their food supply came from when Romans took over the um, empire. Well, not the empire, but the kingdom of Egypt. Okay. Oh, I forgot. You know what? I've been telling you all these cool stories about the Egyptians, like the pharaohs and shit. I have yet to tell you the really funny, kind of some of them fucked up stories. I have, I have yet to tell you about those, actually. Those, I need to talk about those because there's a lot of them. You know, we're having, we're, it's all fun and games. We're having serious discussions about Pharaoh succession and gods and slavery and corvée systems and whatnot. But I've yet to actually talk about the fucking weird ass stories of the Pharaohs. Um, CJ, how you doing, buddy? How you doing, man? Uh, waffle dog. How do you feel about having a fan from Giza, Egypt? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I had a lot of fans from Egypt. I thank you for watching the stream. I want to visit someday, definitely. Yeah, we want those. Those are the fun ones. Well, wait until I'm done with these trees. And then I will tell them to you. Uh, what story do you want? Do you want... Oh, God, there's so many of these. Um... Do you want a romantic story? Do you want a creepy story? <laughs> and when I say creepy, I don't mean like, ooh, ghosts. I mean like, you know, you're creepy. That kind of story. Romantic story, creepy story, or just a weird story. Actually, that weird story, it's pretty funny. I mean, they're all kind of funny, but yeah. Tree story. <laughs> Give me the creepy story. Creepy story, creepy story. Okay, okay. Um, I have to remember which pharaoh this was. I think this was Menkara. Menkara, the guy who, you know, we're the drunks of Menkara. We built his tomb, you know? Okay. Menkara. One of the three great pyramids of Giza. If you go to Giza and you have those three big pyramids in the Sphinx, okay? The biggest one is Giza. Then there's the py well, Pyramid of Khufu. And then the second biggest is Khafra. Menkara's pyramid, by comparison, is very small. It's, it's very small, and it's kind of off to the side, but it's still part of that complex, okay? So this is a very short story, but it's creepy. And it, once again, these stories probably did not happen. They were more of, like, tales or something. It, it, this story was probably a lot more endearing back then. Um, it's kind of similar to the story of Cinderella a little bit, actually. There are parallels here. So the story goes with this. Um, a eagle or a hawk, one of the two. I think it's, just, it's probably just, just use a hawk because Horus or e a falcon, whatever. Anyway, a large bird, all right? A large bird swoops down and picks up this lady's sandal, Okay. So there's a lady walking around Egypt, and she loses a sandal. And then this bird comes down and picks it up. And legend has it, brings it to the pharaoh. The pharaoh's chilling out, 
being the pharaoh. He's like, I'm Menkara, bitches. You know, like, I'm pharaoh. You know, whatever. I'm the king. And then this bird just... And then drops this sandal in his lap. All right? So he picks up this sandal. And then he sniffs it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you see where this is going. He sniffs the sandal like... Ah, oh, the perfume of this sandal. This is the one for me. I must find the owner of this sandal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a creepier version of Cinderella. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> okay, so he snips the sandal, right? And then he finds the woman. I don't know how he finds her. I mean, he's the goddamn pharaoh, so it, he could pretty much just snap his fingers and like, every woman in Egypt that has lost a sandal in the last 24 hours, please approach, you know? And then she's like, that's my sandal. And I forget her name. It, it started with an R. Um, actually, I can look it up right now. Hold on. Ugh. All right, hold on. Um... All right, uh, her name was, this was later. This was during the fourth dynasty. Ah, here we go. Her name was uh, Rhodophis, Rhodophis. Um, so Rhodophis meets the king, meets Menkara, and he's like, ah, I have partook of your sandal perfume. You shall now be part of my court and I will build a pyramid in your honor. And so that is the story of why Menkara built his pyramid. It wasn't meant for him. It was meant for the girl that he had the thing for because he had this creepy feet fetish. That was, that was the story. He builds it. I will build a pyramid to you, my lady. And I don't know if she actually reciprocated this. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Uh, it married? No, she married the pharaoh, but I'm not really sure if she had a choice. And uh, who built her a pyramid as a token of his undying love. There you go. So it's either the most romantic story ever or the creepiest. But there you go. There's the story. <laughs> Simp. <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, so he built it because he had a foot fetish? I'm like... Yeah, that's the story, guys. <laughs> hey, man, listen. If you're the fucking pharaoh of all of ancient Egypt and you can do anything and you're like, hey, baby, I can build you a pyramid. Oh, just let me smell the feet. <laughs> God. Sounds like every girl's dream, honestly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now the weird story. All right, the weird story. Um, let me let me just pull that up. I think this is um, Pharaoh Pepe the Second. This is his story, Pharaoh Pepe the Second. He came a little later. He was a Middle Kingdom pharaoh, I believe. Let's double check. There was a lot of pharaohs. Thirty-one damn dynasties of pharaohs. There was a lot of them. Um, oh no, this was oh no, this was at the very tail end of the Old Kingdom. There was. There was a major drought that occurred called the 4.1 kilo year event. Um, it was like a worldwide drought. And uh, that's kind of what ended the old kingdom. And then there was an intermediate period. And then the middle kingdom picked up. But this is a story from the very far end of the old kingdom. Okay. So this was Pepe II. Not Pepe. P-E-P-I. Pepe. Pepe. Pepe II. Son of Pepe I. And he was the son of Pepe. But that's a different story. Okay. So, um, this is a freaking wild story. Okay, so, uh, there was this land that was south of Egypt. So, you have Egypt, right? Okay, you have the Mediterranean Delta, where, like, Cairo, where, where it's near Cairo. And then you have Upper Egypt, which is Southern Egypt. And then you get into the Nubian Desert, okay? This is the land of Cush, the Cushites. And this is where the Nubians lived, and they had constant back and forth with the Egyptians. At some point, the Nubians would actually rule. So later on, this was years and years later after the Old Kingdom, but they would eventually come to rule all of Egypt. Um, but anyway, even south beyond that was purportedly a land called Yam. 
Uh, sometimes I've seen it spelled Y A M. Sometimes I've heard uh, like Yam. Uh, other times I've heard it spelled or saw it spelled I A M, like Iam. But uh, it's hard because this is a land that no longer exists, so it's kind of you know up for debate of where it was. It was most likely somewhere in central or what is today southern Sudan, one of those areas. So there was a dude that made a lot of trips to this place called Yam or Yam. And he would bring back all of these, like, goods, you know, like, you know, gold and turquoise and all these trinkets and valuable materials and, and uh, probably slaves back to, actually definitely slaves, back to Egypt, okay? So, one time, this guy goes down to Yam and he finds this tribe of people that are all relatively short of stature. Um, they probably had a form of dwarfism. Um, the adult males in this tribe only grew to be about, like, less than five feet tall. So they were short, even shorter than me, and I'm pretty damn short, okay? So he brings one back with him, not against, most likely against their will, definitely against their will. Brings them back with him because it's like, hey, you're short. I bet the pharaoh's gonna love you, all right? And so the pharaoh, Pepe II, writes him a letter expressing his undying happiness over the fact that he's bringing a dwarf back to the palace. So I gotta read you this letter. We have the letter. The letter survived. Gotta love hieroglyphics and uh, hieratic. <clears throat> uh, the dispatch that you sent to the palace informing me that you and your army have returned safely from Yam has been received. In that dispatch, you mention that you have brought with you many precious gifts. You, specif you specifically state that you have obtained a dwarf. One of the gods' dancers from the land of the horizon dwellers. You really know how to please your lord. Truly, I think you must spend all your waking hours working out how to best serve me. I will reward you and your family for many generations for this good deed. Make your way northwards to the palace at once. Hurry and bring with you the remarkable dwarf from the land of horizon dwellers, so that he might perform the dances of the god and delight my heart. When he is on board the ship, make sure that he is well supervised, lest he fall into the water and drown. When he is in bed at night, have your loyal men care for him in his tent. Check on him at least ten times each and every night, for I long to see this remarkable dwarf more than I covet all the precious gifts, uh, gifts of Sinai and Punt. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fucking story. He's like, oh, you have gold and precious metals and materials from this far off land to the south? Yeah, whatever, that's great. You found a dwarf! Bring him to the palace! Bring him to the palace! I want to see him dance! Oh my god, this is gonna be fucking hilarious! This is gonna be great! <laughs> I love that story so damn much! <laughs> he was really psyched. I, I hope Peppy the Second got to see the dwarf dance. He was really excited. He was really excited. <laughs> oh god damn oh. <laughs> see these are the good stories i should have led with these but hey this is why we're two hours into the stream you know what i mean <laughs> keep watch he might drown well he was a slave that was being brought against his will from his homeland to a far off land to perform in front of a pharaoh that he's never heard of so yeah he might actually try to jump in the nile and get the hell out of there you know what i mean yeah I mean, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you if you were taken away from your homeland and dragged into a boat and like, it's like, oh, this Nile, I could probably swim. You know what I mean? Oh, Jim. <laughs> oh, God. So that's that story. That's that story. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now we got leaves for the trees. We have to add leaves to the trees. Tree leaves. Leaf trees. I'm doing way better, honestly. My back, if this was a regular chair for my dining room, oh my god, this would be painful as hell right now. With the gamer chair, this is so nice. Oh yeah, damn what happens if they, oh yeah, what if he can't dance? 
he's just a dwarf. He was just a guy from some random African tribe that they just stole and kidnapped. Where he's like, dance for your king, dwarf. And he's just like, <laughs> like, what do you do if you, you better start dancing. Cause I don't want to know what's going to happen to you if you don't dance. Oh boy. Holy crap, man. Oh, we're building bigger trees. Oh, that's what these are for. These little sticks. He's just a dude. <laughs> oh. oh, we have one more tree I didn't plant. Oh no, where was it going? I don't know. Uh, it might be an extra, we'll worry about that later. Pepe would have loved leprechauns. Pepe, sorry, Pepe. He's not Pepe. That's somebody else. That's the frog we don't talk about. What's the origin of that, by the way? What's the origin of the frog? Is it 4chan? I feel like it's 4chan. Um, do you still play old RuneScape? Uh, I haven't played for a while. I, I got into it during COVID, during lockdown. I, I played it a lot. Got up to the point where it's like, okay, if I want to go any further with this, I'm going to have to devote days and days and days of my life to like chopping trees and lighting fires and fletching arrows. And I'm like, I, no, I don't have enough time for that. Sorry. And then I, I, I moved on. Yes. Ah, I see. So we go from a foot fetishist to a dwarf fetishist, I guess. So what was the last story? Uh, oh, the romantic story. This is a weird one. It, it starts out like a romantic story. Like you, you, you think you know where it's going to go and it takes a hard right turn really fast. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two. Okay, cool. And then we're going to put down... Oh, they go... Oh, oh, I see. My gods, the man that devised this Lego brick set. Actually, who is the guy that built it? It's in here. Ah, oh, here he is. This is the guy. No! Oh, shit! <laughs> this is the guy that built it. Good for him. His name is... um. Uh, Anderson Grubb. Thanks, Anderson. Thanks for building this amazing pyramid of the uh, the old days. Thank you. Let's see what the fetish, the romantic story has. Um, okay. So, guys, there is no fetish in this story. All right. So, um, this is the story of Snefru. Snefru was the first pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. He's the one that built three pyramids in his lifetime. He had a very long reign. Um, I think some people state he, he reigned for like 70 years. He, he became pharaoh when he was like six, and he reigned for a long time. So this story goes... Uh, oh, wait, I did this backwards. Hold on. Uh, this story goes that King Snefru was chilling out in his, uh, in his palace. And, you know, like, can you imagine being Pharaoh, right? Like, it would be pretty boring, right? Like, sounds all good at first, but come on now. I mean, you're gonna get bored with it after a while. Just hanging out in a palace all day, praising the gods, being the avatar. So he's bored. He's really bored. So he calls up his court magician. He's like, hey, court magician. I'm bored. What what do you got for me? Is there anything you can do? Can you can you wile me with some magic trick? Can you do something to like alleviate the boredom? And the um the court mage is like, I think I got something. I think I got something. Now this court mage had been working with Snefru for a while, so he knew what he was into. He knew the kind of guy Snefru was. So he tells the king, go to the palace lake. Because, of course, they're in a palace. They have a big-ass lake on the premises. So, like, yeah, go hang out by the pond or the lake. And uh, you just hang out there, and I'll get it all set up. So, Snefru's like, all right. So, he goes out to the lake, and he sits in his fancy little throne, his fancy lawn chair, out overlooking the lake. And then on the lake, a boat appears, being rowed 
by beautiful women. There's a bunch of women rowing the boat, and there's women on the boat, and they're wearing nothing but fishnets, like literal fishnets. They are wearing nets used for fishing, and that's all they're wearing, which, as you can imagine, leaves nothing really to the imagination. So he's just sitting there in his royal lawn chair overlooking the palace lake, and these beautiful women emerge from the mist of the waters, you know, tantalizing him and just doing general sexy shit, you know? And uh, as they are approaching, one of the women drops her ring. She had a favorite ring that fell into the water. And she begins to weep. And the pharaoh is like, wait! Stop all of the sexiness. This woman, what is wrong? And it's like, I dropped my ring in the water. And it's like, no, we must find her ring. Men, go in the water and retrieve her ring. And he sends people in the water, but they can't find the ring. This is like at night, and this is like a fucking huge-ass pool. And it's like, dude, we can't find this ring. Sorry. And they're like, that is nonsense. We will find the ring. And so he summons the palace, the court mage, the same dude. He summons the court mage. And he's like, court mage, use your magic to find the ring. And he's like, bet. He takes the lake, folds the water over, pulls out the ring, folds the water back, and gives the woman the ring. That's the story. Not, not, not really romantic now that I think about it. I mean, it's kind of romantic. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't have sex with it. I mean, okay, he probably did, but like, it's not in the story what he did. In, in the story, it's just like, oh, this woman is crying. I will find your ring, madam. And he finds the ring and gives it to her. Well, the mage did all the work. And then she's like, thank you, Pharaoh. And that's the story. That's where the story ends. Whatever happened after that, that's completely up to your interpretation. Uh, <laughs> They probably had a nice conversation. You know, they probably just, like, say he sent all the other women. He's just like, women, you're wearing your fishnets. You can leave. I'm, I just want to talk to this beautiful woman. And so, you know, they dress her up in something really fancy. And, um, you know, uh, they just sit on the, uh, the royal lawn chair all night and just talk about life. That's, um, that's probably what happened. Yeah, that's probably how it went down. I can't really see any other way that could have went down. All right, I dropped a bunch of these pieces, so I'm going to have to dig for that. Yeah, there they are. Just two of them. <laughs> Yo, magic dude, find the ring. I have my hands busy. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's probably how it went down. Hey, uh, can you find the ring? I'm uh, kind of busy right now. <laughs> I love the court mage in that story, though, because he's just like, I know what this dude's all about. It's cool. I'm magic. <laughs> uh, didn't know ancient Egypt had fan fiction. That's all it is for the most part. Ripa, fold the lake. Oh, some of you are going to get ads in about a minute. Just giving you a heads up on that one. Okay. Huh, we got all the foliage. Look at all this foliage. Foliage? Foliage? Whatever. Uh, come on, mouse. Come on, mouse. All right, there we go. All right, check this out, guys. All right. Great Pyramid of Giza. Look at that. Oh, da da da. Fancy. This is the alternate nameplate, by the way. Uh, you can place it with the Great Pyramid or how it's written here on the cartouche. It's just that's uh, Khufu's name. The Great Slab of Giza. Return the slab. It's amazing it's taken that long to make that reference. Return the slab. Or suffer my curse. Tonight you will be visited by three plagues. Each worse than the last. Return the slab. And then, of course, we have the classic. Uh, <clears throat> the man in Gaz, the man in Gaz, King Ramses. 
He's the man, the man goes, the man and goes, King Ramses. So there were a lot King Ramses. There were like fucking nine pharaohs named Ramses. There was a lot of them. Uh, there might have even been more than that. How many were there? There were, um, uh, there were eight. There were eight kings named Ramses. The famous one is the second one, if you just want to cut to it. Ramses II or Ramses the Great. New Dynasty Pharaoh, and he ruled over Egypt when it was at its most powerful. Controlled the most land, all the way down into Nubia, all the way up into Sinai and into the Levant, which is like where modern day Israel and Jordan is. He, he controlled all that shit. Um, very powerful dude. Um, he is most likely the Pharaoh that is mentioned in the story of Exodus. Um, where, uh, you know, Moses, you know, leads all of the Jews outside of Egypt, parts the Red Sea, Pharaoh, and all of the plagues and everything like that. The, the Pharaoh that they are most likely referring to is Ramsey II, even though Ramsey II is not mentioned by name in the Bible. Some Pharaohs are. Some Pharaohs are mentioned directly by name in the Bible, but Ramsey's is not. Uh, but yeah. All right. Whoa, what's next? Uh, we go. We just got some of these. Oh, we're making steps. That's cool. Steps are fun. Steps are always a blast. Oh, we're stacking the steps too. Whoa. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh. All right. Tell us stuff about Mansa Musa. Mansa Musa is probably well known as like the African king that was the richest man in the entire world. Um, now, what empire? Was he part of the Songhai Empire or Mali? No, he was of Mali. Yeah, yeah Mansa Musa was from Mali. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, he went on a big campaign. Uh, through Egypt at one point where he blew like a lot of his money like a lot of it but um yeah he was regarded by many to be like the richest man in the entire world like period like even more than like Jeff Bezos and shit yeah yeah Molly Mali yeah Molly yeah um yeah, I know a little bit about Mansa Musa. Um, let's see, in terms of other uh, sub-Saharan cultures, um, there was the Kushites, who I mentioned was south of Egypt. They were the Nubians. The Libyans were to the west. Um, Greece, the Greeks basically referred to, they didn't know all of Africa because they hadn't gone all the way down to like South Africa, but the Greeks, uh, all of the area of Northern Africa where Egypt was and everything on the border of the Mediterranean, like where Carthage ended up being in Tunisia, that was all Libya to them. So Libya is a country that lives to today in between Algeria and Egypt. But back then to the Greeks, all of Africa was Libya. Um, so then you have the Songhai Empire, you have down south, you have eventually the Zulus, but before then you have Great Zimbabwe, you have the Aksumites, um, a lot of empires down there. Um, you have the, oh, what was the name of the, there was a massive migration of people from Northern Africa, like Northwestern Africa on the Ivory Coast to Southern Africa. What were they called? Oh, I know this. I know this. I'm failing my history class today. The, um, don't tell me I know this one. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Certain culture. It starts with a B, I think. Mmm. All right, I look it up. Hold on. I have a chart. Oh, damn it. Bantu. Yep, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I failed you. It was the Bantu people. The Bantu, damn it. That's how you know I failed my... Oh, I failed, I failed class. I failed my history class. All right, now hold on a moment, because these, these stairs are confusing. All right. Stairs are always confusing. I still don't know how they work. Uh... 
Okay. All right, all right, all right. So I got that step done. Okay, so I take this thing. And then... That. Okay, and then... Oh, it's like a clip. Oh. I see. Wait. Nah, I fucked that up. Hold on a second. Hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. They say that was a little confusing. All right, it's okay. I got it. Yeah, I mean, like, in terms of Egyptian mythology, I mean, it's like the actual stories of that. I mean, it's batshit crazy. Horus rips off Set's dick at one point. Set rips out his eye. Impregnation. You know you know how it goes. I mean, that's that's just a wild story in itself. There we go. Okay, and then I just do this. Oh, I see. Oh, that is cool. Look at that. I made stairs. I have no idea how they work, but I made stairs. Look at them stairs. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Yeah, in every single type of mythology, there's always a bunch of horny people. There's always a bunch of gods that are just, like, horny all the time. Because at the end of the day, gods are just a... They're just a representation, a personification of, um... Of human desires. That's what they are. I mean, at the end of the day. Especially the Romans. And the Greeks. And the Egyptians. And everybody. We all have human desires, you know? They all are exposed through the writings and stuff and everything. All right. Oh, that's like a statue of a guy. There we go. All right. Oh, I love how this piece is like pillars. They just give it to you. You don't have to build it. It's just a piece. That makes my job so much easier. There, done. I built a bunch of pillars. <clears throat> Ripa, walk up them stairs. I love Ripa. When we go back to Isekai d and I love how Anthony in Isekai d and my new character Anthony, has not had a chance to fight at all yet. Um, he's really cool. I'll talk about Anthony really quick. Anthony's awesome. He just has, like, a cool Iron Man suit. And I gave him, like, a bunch of, like... Like, I gave him Firebolt and um, Ice ice Bolt or... Um, uh, what's it called? Firebolt and Frost Beam or whatever. And it's like he has them on his gauntlets, like Iron Man gauntlets. So, like, Iron Man has the Repulsor Cannons. So with Anthony, he has like Firebolt, Frost Breath, you know, just pew, pew, pew. He has a sword inside of his gauntlet that he like cuts shit open with. Um, he has like the thunder gauntlets and shit that he punches people with. I can't wait till we get to Anthony's stuff. He's going to be badass, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. What else to talk about, Egypt? I still have stories. I mean, it's a 3,000-year-old fucking culture. I could go all night. Ray of Frost, that's it. There you go. Frostbite, because there, is there isn't a spell called Frostbite. I just don't think it's as good. Uh, oh, one more. One, one more thing. All right. Are we done? Nope. Still going. Almost done with this bag, though. I think we're pretty much done with the town, and I think we're moving on to the town. I think we're actually moving on to the pyramid next. I actually don't even know if we need this part. I think we're going to put this aside and then work on the pyramid, and then uh, we just take the pyramid and attach it to this, and I think we're done. I mean, I say we're done, but, like, we still have, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, like, seven bags left, so it's all relative. But you know what I mean?
More stories, the gods demand it. Damn it, teching. Um. Okay. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, hold on. I'm really close to getting done with this particular section. And then I think I'm gonna... Uh, do I have... I might, I might make some food after this. Uh, who's hungry? Does anybody want to eat? I, I might, I, you know what? I'm going to make some tea. I found some Egyptian tea in the store the other day. It was Egyptian licorice. And I, I see that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I've had it in there for months and I haven't made it yet. And I'm like, oh shit, that's perfect. So I think I'm going to go make some tea, which is also going to help my throat because my throat is getting a little scratchy. I'm almost out of water too. I'm going to take a bathroom break, maybe make some food. Um make some tea, you know, that should be a fun time. Yeah, but I'm, I'm almost done with this part. Oh, my Zelda shirt shipped. Yay. Isaac gonna get a Zelda shirt. I can't wait for Tears of a Kingdom to come out, guys. I am way hyped. I'm just not gonna be, I'm just not gonna make, uh, it's a good thing Tears of a Kingdom is coming out Friday. I'm going to do the One Piece review on Thursday. You're not going to hear from me for like five weeks. Sorry. I'll come back and review the chapters later, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. These little jagged parts go on top. That's neat. It's a maze. You know what? Honestly, I'm just so happy I was able to go through all those stories and tell you so much about history and I still didn't fuck this up. Like, I still was oh, I made a mistake. I made, a, I made a couple of mistakes, but overall, I mean, this is fun. All right, we're almost done with the last page. Last page. And then we're going on to bag six. I mean, bag five. And I think that, yeah, bag five is when we start building the pyramid. And you know what? This is actually going to be relatively simple, I think. It's just stacking a bunch of blocks. It's just pretty, it's not like putting trees together or building houses. It's just stacking taller blocks. Um, there is a little bit of intuitiveness to it, but yeah. All right, I got to get this one more part done, though. Okay. Yeah, Legos are way more easier to work with than uh, Mega Blocks by an order of magnitude. I saw somebody saying Blue Blocks are really good, Blue Bricks or something. There's a company called Blue Bricks or something that's better than Legos, but um, I'm going to go with Legos because they won the marketing war, I guess. You know that game is leaked. Some people have it already. Well, I'm going to wait till release. I actually bought the uh, the Zelda Switch. So I bought... I have the Tears of a Kingdom Switch. It's so cool. I'll show it to you in a second. After I um, get all this in. Ah, did it backwards. Not bad. Easy solution to that problem. Wait, really? What's this? That doesn't look right. Huh? Hold up. No, that's right. It says I should put it on like this. Oh. Oh. No. That's the way that... This is the way that fits properly. This way, the way they want me to put it on... Oh, wait. No? Wait, right? Wait, what? Oh, oh, okay. No, 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 no. I, I, I did it backwards. I'm a moron. It's okay. So we have this thing. Okay. Okay. Look how easy that was. That was awesome. I see. I see what the problem was. I think. All right, let's try that now. There we go. Now we got it. Okay. All right, there it is. Um, let me show you in close-up view. The Great Pyramid of Giza. And this is the, uh, this is the funerary uh, mortuary temple where everybody would gather to worship here. And then if you go through here, you would have the causeway, this ramp, where you'd ascend... And, and regular, like, people aren't allowed to do this. This is basically, like, like, priests and shit. And then here's the entrance to the pyramid itself, which we still have to build. You have the Sphinx. 
the various sphinxes. The guardians of the pharaoh. Here are the pharaoh's uh, family's tombs here. And then over here, you have the little town where all of the <coughs> slaves also... Um, Builders, laborers. I mean, they were builders and laborers. They were also just, you know, you know slaves. Uh, built the pyramids. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Ugh. All right. Uh, let's see. We got a lot of extra pieces here. I'm going to pick these up. Put them over here. Ah, all right. Next is bag five. Both of them. But I'm gonna take a quick break here. Ugh. This is empty. I have to go to the bathroom. I have to do that. Uh, you ever play Smite? No, I haven't. Have not played Smite. Da, 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 da. What's the worst thing you can hear your mechanic say? Um, you got it caught in where? <laughs> um, all right. All right, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. Uh, do I have the starting soon screen? I do. I have a starting soon screen, which is Koala. <laughs> it has the chat on, but I chat's huge because I had to make it for the, be able to see it easier. Uh, hold on a moment. All right, I'm just going to have Koala up while I use the bathroom. I'll be right back, guys. Oh, wrong screen. There we go. All right, I am back. Bathroom break. He's peeing. He's still here. Is it over? I'm not gone. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to make some shit. Um, okay. Um, yeah, let's make that tea. Let's do that. these yogi teas you know so this is a yogi tea egyptian licorice i mean if there's ever a time to you know eat this it, it would be now and um it's caffeine free which is good because i don't want to stay up till the old hours of the morning um he didn't even start the main pyramid yet <laughs> i mean technically yeah i haven't even built the actual pyramid yet uh which is funny 
So I'm going to do this. Make tea with a kettle, an electric kettle. that much water. That is entirely too much water. Alright, that's fine, I guess. Alright. And tea! That's cool. I like how it lights up. Hold on. Let's go dark. Ooh. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Gotta watch the new One Piece episode. Can I have your old Switch? I'm using it in my game room. Oh yeah, let me show you the new one. This is a pretty cool looking Switch. Um, so it has the really cool uh, fingerprints all over it, but it also has uh, this design on it on the back you can't really see it but there's like swirls and shit and i'm actually playing breath of the wild again just to kind of get used to the controls again i don't want to pick up tears of the kingdom and be like i don't remember how to control link i don't know how to do the the shield guard the perfect guard in the flurry rush i don't know how to do it anymore Is tonight a mac and cheese kind of night? Uh, it would be if I had any, which I do not. I have pasta, but yeah, you know, I'm debating. See, okay, we ate out last night. I was out at my friend's place, and it was my birthday this past week or two, and it was my friend Cody's birthday. So we both went out. We all had kind of like, oh, you guys get to pick dinner. So we went out, and we had some good food. And um, I got a grilled cheese sandwich and some onion rings, and I still have the rest of it in the fridge. So I'm not really thinking about heating anything up. Oh, I have I have tomato soup. I could make soup with the grilled cheese sandwich. Has this ever been attempted before? I don't know. Grilled cheese and tomato soup. <laughs> Hold on, let me check out my other options here. Because I'm kind of hungry now. I really don't feel like cooking anything in the oven. Yeah, no, we're doing that. We're doing that strategy. Uh, yeah, okay. Leftover grilled cheese. And I think like three onion rings. Yeah, we're going with that. It's not even that full of a sandwich. Uh, what do we got here? Um, yeah, we got tomato soup. I don't even want to make the tomato. I don't even want to make the tomato soup. I'm so lazy. <laughs> I'm just heating this old grilled cheese up and eating it. I'm not even going to eat the soup. <laughs> yeah. I swear I love to cook. I love to cook, but, like, I'm just hungry now. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just invented the wheel, folks. Oh. It's quick, it's simple, I can eat it and then wash my hands and then get back to cook, get back to building the fucking pyramid. Hey man, I'm building the damn Giza pyramid. What do you want from me, okay? Oh, actually, wait. That was the whole reason I put the USB extender on this thing. Yeah, I'm building the Giza pyramids. What do you want from me? Hey, I'm building the pyramids over here. Come on. Oh. That's probably good. Yeah, it's warm enough. I'm building the pyramid.
pyramids over here. Leftovers are fine, y'all. I mean, yeah. Hey, man, leftovers are what they are. Ah, oh, there it is. Egyptian licorice. Warming and naturally spicy sweets. There's an asterisk. What's the asterisk for? These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is intended to di is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. What does it say it cures? It just says herbal supplement. Okay. Foot fetish pyramid. Easy geezer. Right, I'm gonna go eat. And have some of this tea. Maybe a cookie. I'll have dinner. Some of this cookie. All right. Oh yeah, this is... Dude, this is super healthy. Look at that. Onion rings and a half a grilled cheese. Actually, I'm gonna get some ketchup for these onion rings. Hold on. <laughs> you know what? Just because I'm healthy, I'm gonna do no sugar ketchup. Actually, that's a lie. Screw that. I'm just using regular ketchup. over here. I have a full bottle over there. I didn't even notice that. All right. Oh. Cure is the Pharaoh's curse. Oh, God. Shitty. I mean, these aren't shitty. These onion rings are amazing, actually. Mm. These are good. Hmm. Put your extra piece in a Ziploc bag. I am eating all of this. I'm telling you right now. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, I swear to God, I use this kitchen to make really good food. But that takes time. In the words of Josh Weissman, good food needs to be built. All right? I don't have time. Like, look, I would love to dedicate my whole time right now to making delicious chicken parmesan. To taking a bunch of chicken, pounding them flat... Dusting them with flour, making a nice uh, pancetta sauce, a little bit of spice thrown in there, um, deep frying them, getting out my Dutch oven, throwing in a bunch of oil, deep frying them, and then taking some fresh mozzarella and then melting it on top of it and making this pancetta sauce, this fucking amazing thing, and then sitting there and eating it. I would love to do that. That would take about an hour and a half, okay? <laughs> if I'm hurrying, it would take that long, all right? Meanwhile, I have a pyramid to build, and this grilled cheese is just sitting in my fridge. So, you know what? Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> that plate is not surviving. I love these plates. These plates do a pretty good job, actually. You guys act like this is the most unhealthy thing Americans eat. <laughs> not even close. Mmm. Oh my god, this is so good right now. Oh, my tea's done. Alright. Uh. suggest that I let it I let this tea steep for seven minutes I hear if you wait longer for the tea to steep I mean it takes longer but it tastes way better so I'm gonna let that steep for seven minutes it's 1058 right now so 1105 we're taking that out I don't care if that's not the way you drink your tea I don't care if you're British I don't care if you're whatever all right that's what I'm doing 
That's the way I'm doing it. Mmm. Mmm. I'm getting hungry. Go eat. Go get a grilled cheese sandwich. I could even make a really good grilled cheese sandwich. I can make a grilled cheese sandwich way better than this. What I do is I take two pieces of bread. Go figure. A lot of butter. Like salted butter. Add the butter. And then uh, I add some mustard. I add this sweet and spicy mustard I have on top of it. You might be thinking mustard on a grilled cheese. Bear with me. I also chop up, if I have it, some... I have a pancetta or some kind of like... um like crispy bacon, uh, you know, like stripped bacon or whatever. I can do that. I can cut up Genoa salami or whatever. Throw that in the cheese too. I like onions. Throw some onions in there, you know. So then take some Gouda and Swiss or Cheddar Jack or whatever. And then butter both sides and then flip. So good. So damn good. This is pretty solid though too. Mmm. It takes time to make a really good grilled cheese. It takes time to make really good food in general. You know? It's going to be bitter. That's way too long. It's going to be bitter. I don't care. That's what we're doing. It's going to be bitter. You don't understand. Well, we'll find out. Oh, these were really good onion rings. I had most of them last night. These were really good, though. You look like you're putting on some muscle. Well, I go to the gym a little more. I'm trying to go three times a week. I only got to go twice last week. I might go tomorrow. After this, I'm going tomorrow. Uh, check the super chat. Yeah. If you could have any One Piece characters in your own crew, who would you be in your crew? I think I made a video all about that once. Uh, Law's in, definitely. Robin's in, definitely. Nami's in, definitely. Khalifa's in, definitely. Are you noticing a trend? Um, Odin's going to be in. Can I pick characters that are dead? Because Odin's in. Hmm. Reset. Ah, shit. All right. All right, there we go. Well, if it was going to crash, that would be the time to do it. Hmm. Yeah, internet was great, and then I went upstairs. <laughs> hmm. All right, last bite of the grilled cheese. That was good. I don't care what anybody says. That was a fucking delicious meal. Onion ring, grilled cheese. I just wish I was more. I wish I had the full sandwich back. All right, let's go get this tea. here showed me just like the little squeeze trick. Alright. Oh, that smells good. Oh, wow. That smells really good. It smells like uh, Big Red. You know, the gum? Like the cinnamon kind of scent. It's really good. I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to this. 
would even say scaldingly hot. Ah, oh, you guys enjoying yourselves? Are you having a nice quiet evening with teching? The nice quiet evening with teching. All right, now I'm just trying not to spill this all over the fucking pyramid or myself or my computer equipment and I will be solid. All right, we got my mug. A day without geography is like, just kidding, I have no idea. I don't know, I like it. A fan sent it to me a while back and I enjoyed that. And then I have my regular iced tea in case I want that. I love this Saturday with teching. Oh, welcome back to the stream. Welcome back to Egyptian History with Teching 101. Today we will be discussing the rise of Pharaoh Narmer as the hero that united both of the lands. All right. Well, we have a pyramid to build. So, if I don't think we need this part, I think this part is done for all intents and purposes. We're just going to land the new pyramid on that. So in which case, I'm going to very carefully move this back here. Look at that. All right. All right. Bag five. Five alive. Let's do this. Get out of here, Millennium Ring. I don't need your sorcery. See, now this looks like a lot of shit, but it's honestly really big pieces, so I think this is going to go quick. All right? All right, but I am going to separate the bags because they're separated in bags for a reason, so... Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, there's bags and bags and bags. Ugh. So many bags. It's still Saturday evening. I mean, it's 11.08 where I'm at right now. Okay. Oh, is this hot? Is this ready for a sip yet? Oh my god, that's still, that is still extraordinarily fucking hot. Like, okay. Alright, uh, step one! I did it! <laughs> that's literally step one, step 77. Step 77 is just take a piece and just lay it down. <laughs> We did it! Guys, we did step 77! Woo! Step 77! <laughs> I just I can't believe it. I can't believe we got this far. Step 77. <laughs> Rippa is like the Hulk. Man, people are just having fun with Rippa in the chat. And you know what? That's fair because Rippa deserves the uh, attention. He's really the one that... I mean, he's really going to be the one to save the world. I mean, we're not going to really do anything. Alright. Ripa, do step 77. And that's step 78. We're moving. We're trucking, see? We're moving fast. Look how fast we're moving, guys. Look how fucking fast we're moving here. And, uh, boom. Guess what? 
Step 79 right there. Moving right along here. Uh, step 70. I mean, step 80. Yeah, 80, 80, 80. Okay. There's that. <clears throat> There's that. Um, there we go. Step 80. Done. All right. Step 81. Bam. Step 81. Oh, wait, no. Okay, now, bam, step 81. Yep. Okay. Okay, now, now things are getting... Two of these on top of one another, and then uh, I'm space everything out. Where is everything at? All right, we need. Uh, oh, okay. It might be over here. It might be over here. Tree, tree, later, Ripa. Is this stream gonna be saved? Yes. Yes, it will. Just gotta make sure it's all lined up, baby. That's all it is. That's all it is, baby. Right here. Okay. Hi, from Singapore. Ah, Singapore. Lovely place. I've never been. I would love to go. A lot of places I would like to go, though. And I probably won't ever go. But I should go. Okay. The only thing that stops you is yourself. These are weird. Okay. Still really hot tea. Tea is still really hot. I, I don't want to try that tea yet. Uh, we back. Cool. All right. We're in building mode right now. Construction mode. Uh, let's see. What's a good question? What's something we can talk about where I can kind of have like parallel thinking process going on in the background right now? <sighs> Teching is King Crimson. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. Every YouTuber with a shitty internet connection is kind of King Crimson, if we're being honest. Okay. Yep, two of these. Uh, okay, and two of these. Okay, so we're just doing this. Okay, I see what we're doing here. We're just building. This This is really not going to probably take that long because this is just like the basic outline of the pyramid. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Hmm. I need, oh, right here, see? Just when you think they don't give you the piece, like they forgot the piece. It's like, oh, no, they didn't. It's right there, I'm an idiot, okay. Still going strong, I see. Can we get any hints for Marines? Um, I will pick one of you to ask a single question about One Piece Marines, and I will answer that question. How about that? Does that sound cool to you? 
Sound good to you? We can do that. And if that one person decides to, that one person could decide to just be like, ask a stupid question and I'll answer it. Kind of like a, uh, kind of like a monkey's paw or like a genie kind of situation. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Dr. Nemo, what is your character's name? I think that doesn't really give a lot away. It kind of does, sort of. It depends on how much you know. Uh, my character's name is... Oh, God, that's so hot! <laughs> This is really good tea. Has a hint of cinnamon, but something else that I can't really. Can't really tell. It's very good though. It feels nice. Ugh. My character's name is Kai. Um, all right. All right, so now we're building around the edge. The edge, right? Yes, yes. Oh, perfect, yes. <clears throat> As in ocean? I, I, I just said I was gonna answer one question. I didn't say any follow-ups. That wasn't part of the, that wasn't part of the deal. And you know it wasn't part of the deal. It wasn't part of the deal, man. That's what I mean. I said I don't think that would really answer. I don't think that would really solve a lot of... <laughs> that That really isn't going to answer a lot of questions. <laughs> but you wanted uh, the name, and there's the name. Yeah, that's how it's spelled. K-A-I. And I'm already giving you an extra question, so there you go. All right, I'm so generous. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to have to flip this over here. Okay. All right. Ooh, this is, this is weird. All right, well, I can do this part over here first. This part doesn't look that hard. Okay, just do that and then do that. Okay, so that's over there. That's easy. Um... Now, over here, I'm going to need a bunch of weird pieces that I've never used before. Uh, excuse me. Um, all right, I'm going to need... All right, hold on. Let's assess this here. Okay, I'm going to need one of these. One of... Right over here? Yes, one of these... Checking D and D. No, I don't know what that Nin show is. I, I haven't. Uh, no, I didn't get it from. Um, I'm not gonna give you any more information <laughs> about the character. That's the character's name. Is Kai. That's it. The rest of it left up to your interpretation. There it is. Okay, I need another piece that looks exactly like this. Uh, oh wait, is this it? Yeah. Okay, good. 
All right, I found it. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah. Pearl and Cyril's Child. Yeah. There is an epilogue, if you haven't seen it, of Doxy and William going on, like, another adventure. And that's up on my vlog channel if you have not seen that one yet. But I did that epilogue. I just texted Rustage, and I was just like, hey, I, I made this epilogue. I, I had William and Doxy join the revolution. So, um, yeah, there you go. And he's like, oh, that's cool. That's it, then. I'm like, all right, cool. There you go. What is your... Here's a question. We could talk about Rustage, because he's probably asleep right now. What is your favorite Rustage rap? I like the pineapple song, personally. That's my favorite. <laughs> All right, I think I might have... Did I mess this up already? No, no, I didn't. I did not. There we go. All right, that's a weird-shaped thing that I created, but okay. Oh, and I have to add one more of these. Bounce Back. Uh, family Business. Let's see. Generic. Just generic. His Straw Hat Cypher. That was a really good one, yeah. I've listened to his album. How do I fit? What? Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, I was also supposed to add one of these. I did miss a step. It's not super important, but this is supposed to go right here. All right. Okay. Oh, my. What? Oh, no, 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 no. It goes like this. What? I'm very confused here. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I guess, all right. Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, I... I guess. Uh, I mean, I, I guess it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> All right, it's just kind of hovering there. This this piece, I don't know. Did you like Free Fall by Rustage? I don't remember if I've heard that one. <laughs> I'm horrible. I'm like, I've listened to his songs. Why did I even ask that question? I, I've listened to a lot of his songs. I just don't remember all the names. Just like the pyramids back then, yeah. Does this pyramid come with a mummy? Uh, it does, actually, yes. You can bury Khufu at the end of it, yeah. Teching, baby, we love you. Thanks. All right. All right. How about this? What band are you listening to right now? How about that? That's a that's a that's a question. That's a question for you. All right. Okay. Slipknot. Riz Page, uh, Deer Hoof. Oh, so my friend Pat got me into a band called Power Wolf. And the best way for me to describe their... It's like heavy metal stuff, but it's like werewolves. But if you're like religious, <laughs> it's like if, if like Catholic werewolves made a heavy metal rock album is the best way for me to describe it. Um... It's really fucking good, though. I listened to it at the gym. So that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> Deftones, Techie 101 Forever is my favorite band. Oh, okay, sure, buddy. That's okay. You don't have to, like, I don't make music. You don't have to be like, my favorite band is Teching. I'm like, okay. I appreciate it, but yeah. Catholic Werewolves, yes. But no, they, uh, you know, No Prayer at Midnight. Look up Power Wolf, uh, No Prayer at Midnight, and it's pretty good. I really like that song. I would play it right now, but I'd like this video to be monetized. 
I'm dedicating three hours of my life to building a pyramid. I'd rather this be monetized. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Now, where are we going from here? What's going on here? Uh, all right. Okay. Yeah, I guess we're using these again. I suppose. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see here. I like Josh Groban from Tab to Time. Oh, okay. What are some bands that I started listening to recently? So that's Power Wolf was one of them. I started listening to The Killers last year, which is a band that's been around for fucking ever, but I just I just found them out. I had no idea. I never listened to them before. They're one of my favorite bands now, especially since Panic broke up. Which I'm kind of feeling a little... Oh, wait. I'm using the wrong keys. Feeling a little bit upset over that still. But uh, Killers might be my new favorite at the moment. I've been listening to them a lot. Um, wasn't there something going on with Ed Sheeran? Uh, I remember watching something on Facebook earlier today. He was giving some kind of testimony. I didn't really give enough of a shit to like sit around and watch it, but what's going on with that? <laughs> what's going on with that? Uh, oh, oh, this piece goes to this piece. Oh, oh, oh. That makes sense. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. There you go. Hey, right, cool. Oh, I get it. I know what this is. All right, now I know why it's doing this. Okay, now it's making sense now. Never doubt the instructions. Never doubt the instructions. We need one hell of animal facts for Power Wolf, yeah. Let's see here. Lawsuit with Marvin Gaye's estate. Oh, did he, like, steal a song? He won a case where he was accused of plagiarism. Okay, so he was found guilty. Yes, he won after the case after getting sued. Oh, okay. That happens a lot, man. It happens a lot. Elvis, uh, a lot of songs that he sung were from black artists uh, before him. Like, You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. That was a song that was sung by um, a black singer decades, I think, before Elvis ever sang it. Never got popular. Um, now, to his credit, during his lifetime, Elvis did credit them. He, like, told that, you know. But um, to, the, to the extent of, like, did he give money or, you know, royalties, probably not. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're going to be doing... I think we're going to be doing urchin facts for letter U. Yeah. Have I listened to Pearl Jam? Not a lot. He won the, the thing. Okay, well, I like Ed Sheeran. At least I like Forever, which... Not Forever. What was the song that he... Was it Forever? I think it was. Forever by Ed Sheeran, right? Yeah. That's the only song by him I've ever listened to. <laughs> he wasn't guilty. That's, okay. Good for him. No, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I understand he won. I'm just saying that, like, that made me think of the whole thing with Elvis. One Piece episode 1061 is out. Dude, guys, if I could put on One Piece right now in the background, if I could put on the episode in the background while I'm putting this together, I would love to do that. I wish copyright law allowed me to do that. I wish YouTube didn't give a shit. I would love that. We could just, I could just put that on in the background on my TV, and then we could just watch, and you could watch that in the background while I'm putting this together. I'm like, oh shit, Luffy's doing shit. Oh, oh cool, Zoro. That's neat. <laughs> I would love to do that. But uh, unfortunately, not allowed. Ooh, we get to use the big, oh, we get to make a bunch of things. Oh, look at all this. We get to make a bunch, it's like we're building a car. All right, cool. All right, where are we starting with this? Uh, okay, 90. Oh, cool. We get to use these weird things. Look at these weird ones. Okay, cool. All right. Nice. Okay, and nice. Okay, we've made... Oh, wait. Okay, we made a wrench. We made an ancient Egyptian wrench. Ancient Egyptian wrench. Okay, it's a Sanji episode. Oh, okay, then, well, it's okay, then. Sanji beats up Queen. We all know what happens. All right. Uh, okay, do you ever find it like you know what's going to happen in the anime because of the manga? So it's just kind of like... I mean, I don't get like that all the time. But a lot of times when I'm, there's an episode out, I'm just like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. It's okay. And it's like, you ever get that? 
And obviously the anime adds music and, you know, fluent animations. Like, that's the whole point of an anime. But sometimes I feel like, eh, I know what's going to happen this week. They're going to fight. It's going to win. Uh, let's see. One more of these. It's long. Ah, there it is. Got it. Okay. All right, we've made this thing. All right. I'm going to flip this over. Okay. Oh. Hi, Darren. How are you doing? Good to, good to talk to you, too, buddy. Darren. You know who I like? Darren from uh, WKUK. Darren from uh, Whitest Kids You Know. He's a pretty funny guy. I like Darren. All right. I need, uh, okay, yeah, these, I need four of these, RIP Trevor Moore, I still, dude, like, Trevor Moore dying was really the first celebrity that has died in a long while, probably since David Bowie, where I was like, holy shit, he's gone, you know, and in the case with David Bowie, I mean, he was old, he had cancer, by the way, if you listen to, if, if you're a fan of David Bowie, or you've be, if you ever, if you've become a fan of David Bowie, if you've never listened to him, but you started listening to him, dude, when you listen to Black Star, which is his last album, it was released on his birthday, like two days before he died. That is an album, it is literally an album made by a man who knows he's going to die soon. He knows he's cripplingly ill, he's going to die, and he puts out one more album for his fans, and the album is so... God, it hits like it hits hard. It's very emotional, but it's an amazing album. It just like yeah. But anyway, yeah, David Bowie died. I remember I was kind of choked up over that, and then Trevor Moore died, and I was like, holy shit, that is insane that he died. He had so because that's a dude that really had so much more shit that he could do, you know. And uh, yeah, he's just gone. All right, I need to put some stuff on top of that. Celebrity deaths hit in the gut. Who's the celebrity that died that's hit home for you recently? Like, maybe in the last five, six years or so. I know Jerry Springer died recently. I mean, R.I.P. Jerry. I never watched the Jerry Springer show. I don't think I watched that show a single time. A lot of people said, yeah, I used to watch it when I was home, home, home from school or, like, on a sick day. I always watched, like, The Price is Right or, like, uh, Judge Judy when I was homesick. So, uh, Judge Judy or Price is Right. I never watched Jerry Springer. Yeah, Meatloaf died. That was a rough one. Yeah, that was a rough one. Stan Lee was rough. Stan Lee. Robin Williams. Robin Williams did not hit me right away. But after a couple years later, and I watched a couple more of his stuff, because uh, I've seen Robin Williams stuff before that, but like a couple of years later, Robin Williams, man, yeah. Oh, shit. Did I ever tell you? I always forget this. I always forget to say this. So, do you guys know the director, Chris Columbus? Not Christopher Columbus, the explorer. The, the Chris Columbus. Director of Home Alone, Home Alone 2, the first two Harry Potter movies. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire, which that made me think of Robin Williams, Mrs. Doubtfire. Chris Columbus, right? Yes. Hold on. Uh, let me let me finish this. Um, let me finish this section off here really quick. This won't take very long. Let me put that there. Yeah. Uh, I remember David Lo Bowie from Labyrinth. Yeah. Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Home Alone. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. He he did a lot of stuff. No, he's not dead. He's not dead. <laughs> I was like, do you know Chris Columbus? I just want to let you I get a get a gauge there. No, no, he's not dead. He's not dead. My uncle and my mother and my uncles in general, they grew up with him. 
he was born in this area. His grandma lived like three houses down from my grandparents. So my uncle and my mother, my uncles and my mom, would like play with him when he would come and visit his grandmother. <laughs> and it's like, I, I didn't find this out until like, like recently, like within the last year, I found this out, like a year or two, I found that out. That's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Because if you look it up, he was born in, um, if you look it up on Wikipedia, Chris Columbus was born in Spangler, Pennsylvania. That's the same hospital that my mom was born at, that, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. A small world. Yep, small world. Yeah. All right. All right, we're putting these over the panels now. All right. Okay. Made this kind of thing. Hey, you know what would make this go easier? 3D printer. Just 3D print the damn thing. That's what they should. They should have just used that in freaking Giza. Just 3D print the damn pyramid, man. 3D print the thing. All right. Oh, there you go. See, we're, we're slowly ratcheting up. We're building this pyramid. Okay. All right. Now. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, what's going on here? We've got a lot of different pieces. Okay. Whoa. All right, hold on a second. All right, this, okay, this is at a weird angle. So this piece goes here. I have never touched a Lego in ages. I remember my first Lego set I ever had was in a helicopter. Uh, my dad got it for me for Christmas. My parents got it for me for Christmas. It was, um, this isn't making any sense. I think I fucked something up here. Uh, wait, no, 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 you know what? I fucked up, but I don't think, oh wait. I think I fucked it up, but it's not hard to fix. Is it? Oh. I. I'm not sure. I need another angle of this, and I can't see this angle. All right. Hold on a moment. All right, hold on. Some of this isn't mis making sense. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. All right, wait. All right, that makes sense. All right, I'm doing good there. Okay. What in the... Huh. All right, well, hold on. Let me add this here and then this goes here RIP church <laughs> yeah um, there's one piece here this this weird this weird thing that I put in like seven steps ago it's just not lining up correctly I mean, unless, well, I mean, it can work if I do it like, oh, wait, oh, I got it. Yeah. Wait, what? No, that's not right. Shit. How in the fuck did this go? All right. 
right. This is the first, I think, major fuck-up of the night. I think the first major fuck-up, period. I don't... Okay, these are supposed to be even to this, so it has to be on this level, but it just doesn't work. This is supposed to be all the way in. Uh, okay, we're good. All right. All right, we need to get to the bottom of this. Bookmark that page. We're going to come back to that in a second. All right. That's right. Okay. All right, I assembled this right. This is correct. This is 100% correct, the way that this is made. See, I can fit it like this, but there's this side jutting out. I don't think that's supposed to do that. This is probably not supposed to be jutting out over here. We good? We still streaming? Yeah, we are. Huh. All right. Hold on. I got to go back some steps here. Luckily, I don't have to go back that far. Yeah, no, 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 this is not the way it's supposed to go on there. Okay. All right, all right, I gotta go back. I gotta go back. I apologize, but we gotta do, we gotta roll it back, ladies and gentlemen. Roll it back, reset, reset, reset the pyramid, everybody. Go back. I can leave these pieces here, that's not a big deal, but I think this top part's gotta come off. Yeah, that's not, it doesn't. It's not going to be that hard to come off. Well, as I say that, the whole thing pops out. Okay. All right. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Whoa, shit. I was afraid of that. Okay, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Just set that there for right now. Okay. Okay. Going back to this step. Step 88. All right. Where the fuck did I fuck up here? Wait a minute. No? No, that's... Wait. Okay. Okay, we got all of that. And we added... I have to keep going back. I'm sorry, guys. I have to keep going back or else it doesn't make any sense. Rewind, gotta go back, back to the past. Oh my Jack. Watch out. All right. What in the? No, that's right. I didn't fuck that up, okay. Okay, well, no, wait, I fucked that part up. All right. What the fuck? I really, okay, I really fucked something up here. The fuck did I do? All right. Oh, wait. No. 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 That was. That's fine. That's just that extra layer. Okay. All right. So we're back to this step here. Okay. All right. We're back to this step. Okay. Hold on. All right. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. This. This looks exactly like step eighty-seven. Okay. We're back to eighty-seven. All right. Now. This stupid thing. I have to put this thing and this thing in. Okay. So I assembled this. This looks exactly like it should be. So I, I didn't fuck this up. This is good. 
it's really weird how to put it in. It doesn't really explain, like, which... I guess... Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I can go by that. I can go by that. Okay, okay. Excuse me. Okay. So that piece. And then that. And then here. Okay. Wait, no. Oh, I was using. Okay, I was using the wrong piece. Ah, yes. Okay. All right. All right. You know what? Bam. That's it right there. Yep. All right, I got it. It was a little unclear. Little unclear. But we got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. All right, now I just have to do those steps I just did all over again. Uh, shit. But, you know, it is what it is. Okay. These are these two pieces assembled like that and then these two pieces go under like that okay and then it's this on here ah Man, I feel like I'm diffusing a bomb here, man. Three hours ago? We have to restart the whole thing. We have to scrap the whole village, start all back from the original. All right. Okay, so this is... All right. This goes right. I don't know. This will fit. This will fit. Oh, it's fitting. It's fitting. Come hell or high water, this is fitting. There we go. There we go. That uh, fits perfect now. Okay. All right. I think that's what we were supposed to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we're back to this part, which I already finished, so I don't have to worry about doing that again. So put this on again. Mark this way. Okay. All right. We... Didn't, didn't take too long to figure that out, but I did lose some time there and I apologize, but got to make sure it all fit. Oh yeah, this is all working now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all doing it. And now this piece can properly fit right. Yep, there it is. Okay, we got it. We're back up to where we were. We did it. Almost four hours now, I know. Okay, so we're back up to that. Step 99. <laughs> All right, step 99. Try not to any more things up. How about that, Teching? How about you do that? That would be lovely. People want to go to sleep. People want to go to bed. One over, one down. Okay, and then... Da -da 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 -da. Red and white. Okay, put that in there. Put this here. Put that there. I don't know why all these colors are going in the pyramid. I don't feel like they had a. I don't feel like the Egyptians added a lot of color to their pyramids. You know. Actually, no. That's that's wrong. No, they 100% had color. They painted everything. Um, going into the pyramids. So, I mean, now a lot of them have been worn down, but, you know, if you go into a pyramid that's really preserved, then you can see the colors of the statues. They painted everything. Everything that looks really dull and granity and just clay and shit, back in the day, would have been painted super vibrantly. They even had, they had makeup, they had lipstick, they had all that shit back then. Yeah, so, there was a lot of color in the pyramids. There definitely was. Okay, good. I think I got this done. This part is done. Yeah. Okay, step 100. We're not done yet. We're not even close. But, like, you know, 
step 100. It, it, if it matters to you, if it's a milestone, go for it. <laughs> okay. 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 Shoop. All right. Da, 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 da. Do, 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 do. Okay, good. All right, and then this is a weird thing that I have to put together. Put two on top of these. Put a weird little bench thing on top of that. So we don't actually know how the pyramids were built. Um, like, labor, obviously, but we don't know like how they physically move the bricks. There, there's a lot of theories. Aliens did it, obviously. I mean, that's pretty clear. Aliens did it. Uh, extra dimensional, you know, um, Cthuloid beings from the ninth dimension. But, you know, there's theories that they rolled them on little, like they had little things that they just rolled them on. There's an idea that they used some type of oil or soap to like throw like oil to the ground and then they push it. I mean, these bricks would have weighed several, several tons each. Alien slaves, there you go. Slavery, well, here's the thing. Even with slavery, even if you had like super brutal slavery, there still needs to be a way to move the damn bricks. You know what I mean? Uh, you can whip the slaves all you want. That's not gonna magically move these giant blocks of bricks. You know what I mean? If it's just, there has to be a better way of doing it. So we don't know the exact function of how they did it, you know? So, yeah, I'm thinking aliens. Why not? I'm just going to hop on the alien train. All right. Okay. Oh, wait. Did I fuck that up, too? Um. Oh. Wait, what? Huh. Okay, I put that on there. I stacked them correctly. I did that. I did that. Oh, no, I'm good. Oh, it goes over. Does it? It's supposed to. What the fuck? Oh, 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 I have to assemble this thing first. Okay, I get it. I get you now. All right. Okay, that goes over there, and then this goes on top of this. Ta-da, and then that goes on top of that. There, done. Okay, great. Um, and then this part goes over here, and then that goes here, and then it goes. Uh, we're building a pyramid, guys. We're going up. Going up in the world, slowly but surely, we're getting there. I think that's all the pieces for this step. It was the giants. It was alien giants. I'm sorry I'm kind of slowing down a little bit at the beginning. I was like, ah, blah, 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 Egyptian facts. Guy wanted a dwarf to dance for him. Lady sniffs, a guy sniffs a shoe. I, I get it. I'm kind of I'm kind of slowing down here, but it's getting late. It's almost midnight here now. I don't know how long I'm going to go for this. I went to bed at like 2 last night. So, I mean, I'm, I slept. I, I, can, I can keep going. It's not that big of a deal. When I start getting really tired, when I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm tired. I can't make cohesive sentences anymore. Although, I'm not really sure. Did I ever make cohesive sentences? Sen 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 <laughs> oh, I need to talk about something to stay awake. Um, okay, I'm watching Ancient Magus Bride Season 2. It's really fucking good. Um... I'm watching Dr. Stone Season 3. That's really good. Uh, I'm re-watching Yu Yu Hakusho. That's really good. Yeah, so so if any if you have any thoughts on any of those series I just mentioned, go for it. Thanks for everything, Teching. Been watching since the Bleach days. Thank you, Say Dave. Say Dave. My man. Okay. Ooh, what is this? What is this weird thing? It's like a hinge. Look at that. Oh, I'm like frozen. Uh, reset. 
Um, reset the camera? What the fuck? Alright, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, XSplit froze. Like, the, the actual software physically froze, so I couldn't even switch scenes or change the stream. So I had to go into the task manager, I had to control alt delete get rid of XSplit, and then restart it, hopefully in enough time to uh, actually restart the thing. Yeah, okay, we're good though. We're good. We didn't, we didn't cancel the stream yet, so that's alright. Alright. Okay. <sighs> oh, okay. That's a weird. Okay, well, I guess. Um... Oh, we need it. A... Oh, I forgot to put that in. That's not a big deal. I just had to put that in there. All right, that's. There you go. All right. Okay, cool. It's like a ramp system. That's neat. It's like a ramp. It's like a cool ramp. It's like a ramp, guys. It's a ramp. Check it out. It's a ramp. It doesn't take a lot to really to really pique my interest at midnight. It's a ramp. <laughs> Look at that ramp. Okay, what's next? Oh, uh, more shit. Lovely. All right, where's this go? <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm starting to get. I'm starting to feel it now, guys. You feel it, Mr. Krabs? I'm feeling it. I'm starting to get into the slap happy scene. You're starting to get into teching when he's slap happy. That's gonna be. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> when you get to a point where, you, you like your body starts slowing down, you're kind of tired, and then it reaches the point where it's just like, nope, you're still going. I'm like, all right, yep, I'm still going. We got a pyramid to build, sons, sons of sons of anarchy. We're doing it. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Slap happy teching. Um, hold up. I fucked up again, didn't I? Uh, I'm making a lot of errors. Okay. Ah, shit. Yep. Great. Fantastic. Two, wait, wait, hold up. No, this one might have an easy fix. Yes, it does. Oh, thank Christ. All right, that one has an easy fix. That one was just me using one wrong piece. I could just switch that one out. All right. You still look as young as ever. Well, I th thank you. You know, I appreciate it. I really do. I am a vampire. I was born in the year 1627. Hi, how you doing? I'm just a YouTuber now. It's just what I do. Ah, no, go back, go back, go back. Yeah. Ah. Dude, did you ever step on a Lego? That'll really mess you up. That'll traumatize you right there. All right. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, this is all new. Oh, I'm putting this all in. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to start over here then, I guess. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm confused. Now I'm confused again. I think I'm starting to... I think I'm starting to... I think I'm starting to stall out, guys. Oh, wait, no. No, no, no. It's like this. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I think teching's, teching's starting to stall out here, guys. All right. Put that in there. Okay, put this here. Yeah, I guess. 
I just shove it in there. It'll be fine. It'll 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 work itself out. <laughs> Pyramid will be. No one's gonna see this part anyway. This is gonna go under the thing. This is gonna go under the under the hood of the actual giant ass pyramid. This will be fine. Okay. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna spam. I mean, I'm just gonna spam block Darren. Bye, Darren. Fun times. Okay. Two piece. Not one piece. I need a two piece. There it is. Two piece. Now we're good. We're still good. We're still good. I'm like looking at the instructions, like expecting it to be like, no, you fucked up. It's like, no, you're good. All right. All right, good. Yeah. Uh,. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now, one of these goes here. Okay. Uh, oh, right here. That's what the piece I needed. Perfect. All right. There it is. Great. And then that goes here. And this goes here. All right. Nice. Fancy. Fancy pansy. All right, moving on to this one. All right. Dude, I really want to get done with this pyramid tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, especially with my mental state at this moment, <laughs> but we're going to get there. Nah, we're just sleep deprived. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you're if you're hanging out and it's just like, hey, man, teching, you just do what you need to do, man. Don't worry about us. Wow. Okay. Turn it like this. Okay. All right. All right, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. I guess that's what works. I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, put that one there. Okay, cool. I guess, I guess. So it goes. All right, put that there. That one lines up here. We're building the different... Uh, so in Khufu's Pyramid, there's three distinct rooms. There's the chamber where Khufu himself is buried... There's a room that was erroneously originally called the Queen's Chamber because they assumed it's where the Queen was buried. Uh, nobody was ever actually buried there, though, so I'm not really sure why they even thought to call it that, but they did. And then there's, like, a subterranean room uh, called the Underworld Room, and it, it was, like, a basement subterranean room. It was never finished, uh, but that's at the bottom. So, yeah, we actually get to see all of Khufu's, like, from this side, we're going to be able to see the rooms. See it? Yeah. So this is, like, this is the subterranean room, or this might be the subterranean room. This might be the Queen's Gallery. I don't know. Uh, so it's one of, one of those. All right, put that there, and then we need this piece here. All right. da 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 da, -da. Okay, and then... That in there all right all right i think this step is done yeah all right moving on oh yeah this is uh where we're putting the sarcophagus yeah this is khufu oh we're we finally got to khufu we got to khufu we're finally building the <laughs> the fucker's coffin ah oh, god damn it khufu you son of a bitch we finally got to you there he is there he is. Look at him. Look at him right there. This is the son of a bitch that we've been building up to. All right, there he is in his freaking coffin. Hope you're cozy in there, Khufu. All right, here you go. Hope you enjoy your room. <laughs> there, there you go. Hope you enjoy your room, Khufu. There you go. There he is right there in his fucking room. All right. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like shitting on an Egyptian ruler from like 4,000 years ago, over four, like 4,500 years ago. Like, Fuck you, Khufu. <laughs> if Khufu, Khufu was a real guy, he really existed. If I could go back in time right now, if I could time travel back to Khufu right now, I'd time travel back, pick up this fucking thing, and just throw, <laughs> throw it right at his head. It'd be like, ah! And it's like, guards, kill him! And I'd be like, duh! And then swore back to the future. 
All right, Khufu, there you go, buddy. All right. Oh, great, we get to build another one of these stupid things. All right, cool. Well, all right, let's start. Okay, we need a... We need a all right, we need this. We need more of these. Um, oh, this. Okay, this thing. Okay. All right. So... Uh, this is a four piece first. Okay, so that goes over here. Okay. And then we need another one. Okay. And that'll go on like this. Okay. And that goes on here, like so. Okay. Ah! Get on there. All right. And then. Okay, I think I built it. I think that's up to spec. All right. I think this will be easier to put on than the... Yeah, that... Oh, that slides right in. All right, that's perfect. That's way easier. Okay. Okay, and then we flip it around. Okay. Okay, good. Just more brick building. Perfect. Okay. Hope you're happy, Khufu. Hope you're really happy in your digs. Actually, I don't know where Khufu's at right now. I think his mummy was I think his mummy was looted in antiquity, so I, I think we really don't know where he's at right now. Probably dust in the wind. I don't think the grave robbers really spent a lot of time to really preserve his remains. So he's he's gone forever. Yeah. Okay, zoop. That did that. Zoop. Okay, pop that in here. All right, and this part is good. All right, moving on. All right, oh God, we're almost done with this bag. Great. Okay, good. Now we got to put on a bunch of these. Yay. Skip to put that on. Uh, doing. Uh, oh, cool. This is the pyramidian. This is the tip of the pyramid, I think. Make perfume. Where Khufu is right now, he's probably dead teching. Uh, no, he's actually up in the field of reeds. Okay, so something about Egyptian afterlife. That's something we can talk about. So, okay, I'm just, I'm not even gonna fucking give you the build up. Okay, in the Egyptian afterlife, you still gotta fucking work. Yeah, it sucks, right? You die, and it's like, congratulations, you're dead. Welcome to the afterlife. And by the way, this is if you pass the 42 tests with Mott and the Feather and Anubis and all that shit. This is like if you're a good person, it's like, oh, great, you're not lying, you haven't committed sin, you get to go to the Field of Reeds. Congratulations. Well, here are the Field of Reeds. Guess what? You need to still do field work. You need to still be farming, okay? You need to still do this shit. But the good news is you get these things called Schwapti. Schwapti are like little clay figurines that were buried with the dead. Pharaohs would sometimes be buried with hundreds of these fucking things. And the idea is these Schwaptis basically worked like like free men, like not free men, like, like slaves and free men. I mean like free, free men on like a video game. Okay. Like, like basically like, I don't want to work in the fields on the afterlife. I can use an Ushapti to work the fields for me for one day. So it's kind of like, and then it takes another day for it to recharge. So if you have like 360 of these things, you could just like chill out and not do anything. And you just let the Ushapti do everything. Right. Um, Schwabity. Yeah. In the afterlife, Schwabity will do all the work for you. But I just love the idea that, you know, Egyptian afterlife is like, no, yeah, it's paradise. It's nice and all, but you still have to work. I mean, it's like, come on now. You still got to clock in to work. Come on. You don't have any personal days. Ushwapti are basically personal days. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And that's the good afterlife. That's the good thing. That's if you're the good person and you end up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Get out of work free card. Yep. In the afterlife. Okay, flip this over. Uh, okay, ten of the. Oh, that's what all these things are for. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Okay. All right. Not exactly. Okay, there it is. Okay, and then I just build the entire. Yep. I guess we just do that. Okay. Do 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 do. And how about you? Put that in there. Put that in there. Okay. What if you've been bad? Um, I don't know. 
fucking suffer or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I actually haven't read that much about where you go when you fuck up. I really don't. I mean, some probably bad things will happen to you. You'll probably be tortured. I mean, that's just general. Some fiery hellscape or something. You know how it goes. It won't be fun. All right. I built this thing. Then I wanted... Oh, oh, I see what it is. Okay, now I get it. I get you now. I get what this thing is. All right. Okay. Oh, I gotta make, like, wow, I got, like, a whole extra thing I need to make over here. Okay, this goes on top of that, and this goes on top of that. Okay, great. Now, this, oh, it's like this Z-shaped thing. I was wondering what this thing was for. This is like a, um, cool little Z-peg. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that goes on there. da 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 da, -da. Oh, this is the phase I love. This is the phase, you know, when we're, like, almost done with this one particular box. And it's like, okay, great. Okay, and then wheels. Okay. All right. Ta-da. And then this goes on the back of here. All right. Okay. Oh, and it goes inside. Oh, that is cool. Dude, that is freaking dope. I mean, if it fits, which it kind of wants to. Definitely wants to. I'm just afraid to push down and... Ah, there it is. Clicked in perfect. Okay, great. I'm not touching it. Okay, it went in. Great. Fantastic. All right, what's next? Um, we still have a lot of pieces left. Uh, not really, but a few. Okay. Yeah. That does not seem that bad, but gray. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of the worst afterlives I've ever heard of and the best. So in Buddhist, the Buddhist has reincarnation, but Buddhist hell sucks, dude. Because it's like, it's very descriptive on how long you're in there. It's not eternal, but you're stuck in hell for like 10 to like the... 80th power like it's an insane long time so it's not eternal but it might as well be and it's very descriptive about how hell rips open your like um uh all of your skin like the cold air like just you know your skin blossoms like a meat lily and your muscles all exposed as your flesh is peeling off as the intense cold rips your flesh and ribbons off your body like it's very descriptive so that's not a good hell. I wouldn't want to go to that one. Um, the Christian hell, also not great. A uh, lot, lot of fire and burning. Although there's a, different, there's a bunch of different versions of that too. Some of them are like, oh no, you will suffer. And others are like, uh, wait, hold on. Like this? No, not like that. I'm a dumbass. Oh. No, I got it. I got it. There we go. Uh, let's see. How much did I miss? Greek or Roman doesn't sound too bad. Um, I know if you die, you go to a place called the Elysium Fields. If, it's, if you're a good person, like that's their version of heaven, is is the Elysium Fields, the Elysium Fields, or whichever pronunciation is correct. Oh man. Okay. Oh wait, no. Oh no, I was just I just had it at the wrong angle. No, we're good. Okay. All right, now we're good. Yeah, now we're good. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, I'll grab this. Okay. Elysium Fields. Yeah, just like a really cool. See, I've discovered in most cases, not all the time, but in most cases, religions are a lot more descriptive with their hells or their punishments rather than their heavens. Um, 
you know, like hell in Christian teachings is kind of very much described as a place of absolute suffering and torment. Heaven is just kind of this nebulous, nice place where everything's awesome. Though I've heard different versions of heaven as well. Elysian, that's it. Yeah. Elysian, Elysium, one of the two. I'm tired. What do you want? <laughs> okay. Go. Ah! Okay, put that on there. And. Not yet for that. Hang tight on that for right now. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right, that's how you would do it, all right. Oh. Okay. Yeah, in Norse teachings, there's Valhalla, of course, but there's also the place, um, it's like Freya's Hall. It's not, it's like if you didn't die dishonorably, but if you're like, because there has to be, they had to put a place for like, okay, well, the men of Norse mythology, they fight in battle. they strong men and they win, but where are all the women going to go that, that are just hanging out and cooking and having babies and stuff? So they, they go to Freya's Hall, which is not a bad place. I think men go there too if they're not warriors, but then there's like yeah, there's other there's other realms like hell and other versions of that in Norse. Okay. Well, now where the hell does this thing go? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Here. Yeah, there it is. All right, we're we're getting into the final stretch here with this one, at least this piece. Okay. That. Yes, put that there, put that there, okay, put that there. Wait. Hold on. Oh, I see what I did. There's a gap in here that shouldn't be... I think this might be an easy fix, though. Hold on. This one might be an easy fix. Oh, actually, I think it is. I think I just have to move this over more. Yeah. Yeah, this was the last step that I... Oh, that was easy. Oh, thank God. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. That was an easy one. Okay, that was not hard. Okay. And then that just snaps into there, and then there we go. Okay, that was that was a simple one. All right. Dante's Inferno was inspired by Oda, so Dante's Inferno. There's definitely references to that in Impel Down, but Narica, the Narica path, because there's levels in Buddhist Hell as well, and the Freezing Hell could be Kokitos, which is the ninth level of Dante's Inferno, or it could be. Uh, uh, the, the, the colder levels of Buddhist hell, one of the two, um, because the freezing hell is the lowest. Um, I love Impel Down for that reason, though. I love Dante's Inferno. I've actually been working on kind of like a D&D &D campaign, because you can do D&D, &D, like, I, I think traveling through hell, like Dante's Inferno hell, like looking at the different levels and making, like, like demons for it out of the, out of the monster manual, you, you could do that. It's not hard. Yeah. It's both. Yeah, he's definitely it's definitely both, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing also about like whether God loves you. Because in the old days, like God was pretty brutal. I mean, God was definitely more burny and floody back in the day. And then uh most people I've talked to now about at least the Christian God will be like, Oh, God is loving and he's always understanding and I'm like, Well, he wasn't always like that, you <laughs> know. If we're going by that, 
All right, that's done. Now this. Okay. Whoa. Okay, this goes here. This goes here. E Wait. I missed a piece, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there it is. There it is. There it is. I missed a piece. Oh, I missed that from last time, but it was okay. It was okay. I'm missing steps, but they're usually steps that I just had, so it's like whatever. Oh my god, bag six! Do I want to open bag six? <laughs> it's already 12.23. Kokitus. Kokitus? I always say Kokitos. Kokitos is funner. It's funner to say. Kokitos. Kokitos. Because does God exist? I am at just the point of being tired to the where I want to have this conversation, but I still know that like we probably shouldn't have this conversation. Whatever you feel like, man. Whatever you feel like. <laughs> uh, delirious Legos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How long is bags? Oh, Jesus. Well, actually... Uh, <laughs> uh, I keep saying, well, actually... Uh, it's... Okay, I'm on page 108. It's 120 is bag six. I mean, that's really not that bad. Uh, do it. Ready for another four hours? No. All right, what time is it? Can we seriously do this? With, how long have I been streaming? Um, it's, I've been streaming for four hours and 20 minutes. This is already longer than the One Piece D&D finale. Okay. Do it. No balls. You don't have the balls. Let's do it. I want to be the champion Pokemon. I'm on a map. Oh, come on. Bag six. Fucking weak sauce, man. I've seen bigger bags than that when I worked at Dollar Tree. Man. Come on. Bag six. Get out of here. Get out of here. Look at that. That's pathetic. You call that a bag. There's only one bag six, right? Yeah, there's only one bag six. You call that a bag. All right. Oh, there's a lot of small parts in this one, though. It's like cereal. Uh. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Let's do this. We got this. We can do this. Alexa, dining room red. Yes! Do do. Do do. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Okay. Alright, alright. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, we need a piece of this, a piece of this. Okay, that goes here. I have. It was at that. Okay, narrator voice cues up. It was at that moment that Teking decided to give himself up freely to the madness of the pyramid. It was at that moment where Teking realized the only thing that mattered was finishing the pyramid. <laughs> Everything else in his life fell by the wayside. His mother, his father, his home, his sanity. <laughs> Everything was gone, left only in its place was the- Aw, oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta do all this. All right, fine. Fuck it. Let's just do it. Put these two together. Get on there. You better get on there, guys. Oh, you're not playing this game tonight. Oh, there you go. You're going on there. Houses are cheaper in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah they're right. Okay, there we go. That's on there. All right. Yeah, we're building the pyramid, guys. I guess we're going all in on this. Not what I originally anticipated either, but hey, we're here tonight. Okay, got that put on. Okay, more of these. All right. That goes on. Okay, that goes on. All right, this weird double-tiered thing, that goes on here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I guess, I assume. I don't know. We'll find out if it doesn't fit, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out if that shit doesn't fit. I don't know, man. All right, that goes over that, and that goes over here. And then we get a six-prong one. Now we get an eight-prong one. And that just goes right over. Okay, good, great. Don't know what the hell I'm building, but it doesn't matter. Okay, um, da -da 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 -da. we need a two. And we need another two. 
Okay, and we need a six and a six. Okay, six. Nope, get on there. And a six. Okay. Okay. Greetings from Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, from Omaha. That's cool. You're on the Dare Show. Nice. This thing goes over the whole top. Okay. Ugh, get on there. All right. Oh, man. I used to stay up late back in the day, man. Dude, I want to tell you a story. You know, let's just talk stories. Let's just talk legit here, okay? Childhood memories. Not even a childhood memory. After my parents broke up, um, it was just me and my mom, right? And so I'm like 14 years old, 15 years old. It's just me and my mom. And some of my fondest memories are my like Saturday night. My mom went to bed pretty early because she has work. You know, she had to get up early to go to Walmart to go work at her job. And uh, I would have the whole downstairs to myself. So I would have the whole area downstairs to myself as long as I wasn't too loud and I didn't wake her up. So I would have the computer, the computer, we only had one computer in the house and it was downstairs in the living room. So I could go on there and play RuneScape all night. And we had this old floor model wooden television. It was old, it was outdated even at the time. And it had wheels though, it was like a cabinet. So I would sit at the computer kind of like this, because our, our computer desk would be here. You know, and I'd have like a, like my mom's gazelle, which is like an old, remember the, remember the gazelle? It's like, it's like a fucking exercise machine or something. So, you know, like, like the gazelle would be here. So I'd like prop my legs up on that. And then our, my dad's old desk here. And then I would just have like, this would be, this would be what I would do. And I would turn the TV this way. So like, I'd be like, the TV would be right there. So I would just be playing, I have the keyboard in my lap, not a wireless keyboard, it'd be a wired keyboard. Just take the wired keyboard, put it right in my lap. And then I'd be just here playing RuneScape and watching uh, Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. So I'd be sitting here watching Futurama, Family Guy, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, um, uh, Space, uh, Sea Lab 2022. Uh, then, then anime would come on, that's when I started watching Bleach. Bleach would come on, Full Metal Alchemist 2003 would come on, Inuyasha would come on, and I'm just there, just playing RuneScape and just watching TV, and just Robot Chicken, I remember that, yeah, Robot Chicken, yeah, just like doing that, yeah, eating jars of peanut butter, chocolate, dude, dude, that was, that was my life, that was a very precious moment in my life. <laughs> And it's, you know, it's funny. It's like that kind of still exists. I mean, I can at any time just turn on Adult Swim and watch TV and eat peanut butter. I mean, that's not how you play RuneScape. I mean, nothing's stopping me from doing that. But it was, you know, it was like a moment in my life where I'm like, wow, I get like the downstairs to myself. I can kind of do whatever I want. It's my time, you know? It's like, yay. That was very, very nice. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, got that done. All right, now what's this next part? Oh, this is where a lot of the small pieces come into play. All right, all right, what the fuck is this? Okay, all right, all right, this goes on here. These little pieces have like hooks on them, okay. And then top piece is the lock. Yeah, I guess, okay, I got that. All right, and then, uh, right. All right, all right, I made this thing and it goes right in, right? Oh, that's cool. Oh, it attaches that way. That's neat. Oh, thank God, it's a simple page. Oh, look, it's an arrow. It goes like, wait, what? All right. Oh, this is like the top part of Khufu's chamber. Oh, oh, oh. yes, it works. Woo! Yeah! Nice! Cool! <laughs> it looks like a guy dancing. <laughs> Alright, cool. Alright, good, good, good. Alright, going back to the front now. Uh, I think that was the hard part of this set. Okay, down. Okay, that goes over. Okay. Dude, if I didn't spend all that time with the damn Egypt facts at the beginning, we wouldn't be having this problem right now. I'd be done by now, probably. But I had to make this an Egypt stream. I had to tell you the story about the time the guy sniffed the damn sn sandal. I had to tell you the guys the story about Akhenaten. I had to tell you guys all that bullshit that nobody cares about. Because it happened fucking 4,000 years ago. <laughs> Just like, yeah. 
Okay. Where the fuck is this piece? I don't even know where this is. Oh, it's right here. Okay, right in front of me. All right, well, that goes right on that then. All right. Fantabulous. There you go. All right. <laughs> I get very passive aggressive when I'm tired. <laughs> now, look at Mr. Fancy Pants. <laughs> But then we wouldn't know the story, Tekken, yes. Okay. Okay. Ah, building this, I'm like a savage. Building this pyramid. Ah. Alright. Okay. Alright. Good. There's like this string thing, and I have no idea when this is going to come into play. I just hope I don't have to tie a knot, because I have no idea how to tie a knot. So I hope this isn't like a thing. That pyramid's really driving him mad. Oh, I need to finish the pyramid, guys. I need to finish the fucking pyramid. He's going to finish the pyramid. I need to build the pyramid. Oh, okay. All right, what the hell's this thing now? All right, we need sticks. Sticks, 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 sticks. Okay. All right, we're going to put, all right, is there a long stick? Or is it, oh yeah, this thing, this thing. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I see. Let me see. This goes all the way through here, right? All right, let's build these things first. These are like these little claw grab things. Once I start a build, I gotta finish it. You know, I don't. I don't know if I want to start Legos. Um, by the way, I never finished that story about the helicopter. So yeah, my dad and my mom got me a helicopter for. I'm oh, sorry, Santa. Santa got me a Lego helicopter for Christmas, and I opened it once, and I just looked at all the pieces, and I was just instantly like, no, <laughs> I don't want to do this. It's too. It's too hard. It's too much shit. Dude. Although, granted, I feel like Lego instructions have gotten easier over the years. Um, I feel like back in like the year 2004, these, the, the, the instructions were harder to follow. When was, Alexa, when was Legos event invented? The Lego group, founded by Lord Kirk Dickinson, first began producing now familiar interlocking groups in 1949. Oh shit, 1949. I would have not have thought it was that, um, that old. Dude, can you imagine putting this shit together in 1949? Oh my god. Really? 1949? Jeez. They won't even give you instructions. It's just here, have bricks, have fun with it. You build the damn thing. Here, build the, uh, build, build little boy and fat man, the bombs we dropped on, on Japan. Here you go. Build those things. There's no freaking, no instructions. Have fun. 2004 was the most random date. Well, I don't know exactly when I got the helicopter thing for my birth, for Christmas, but. I was like that. 2004, I was 11, so maybe. Yeah. Okay. Got that in. I think that's all this piece was. Yeah, that's all this step was. Okay, moving on. Great. Okay. Uh, now we're doing this. Now we're doing these little spoon things. I like little spoon things. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 It's, I, I, I guess. <laughs> I, I guess. I don't know. But I have it. Okay. Oh. Oh, that's cool. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like the scaffolding. All right. Neat. Yeah, sure. Found. Good. Perk. Cool. All right. Let's go do that again. All right. Yeah, excuse me. Oh, you know what I've been watching lately? Uh, Beavis and Butthead. I uh, never watched it. Uh, it was a little bit earlier than my time, you know, because it was like early 90s. It was right around when I was born. I got more into The Simpsons than I in South Park than I did with um, Beavis and Butthead. But it just came out again, and um, I've been watching some episodes. I don't know anything about, like, the characters, really, except for, like, Beavis and Butthead because it's pretty obvious. But you know what? I'm, I'm liking the show. It's, it's not bad. They're doing, like, the episodes where they age them up. So they're like in their 40s, and it's like, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny shit, actually. I, I laughed quite a bit out loud at that show. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Got got that done. Cool. Great. Awesome. All right. What's next? Oh my God. It's just, it's just like me putting down like fifteen of these little, like caps. That's all this is. 
Yeah, cool, great. Have you watched Primal? Yes, yes. Uh, Gendy, Gendry stuff. Pretty good. I've seen pretty much everything he's put out, except that new show, um, what's it called? The, the Unicorn Show or something. I, it's brand new. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but I like Primal. I like Samurai Jack, obviously. I liked Dexter's Lab. So I'll pretty much watch whatever that dude puts out. He's pretty talented. Okay, Tile... Tile. Tile. <laughs> Tile. 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 At this point, I feel like it's more just for aesthetic. It's not even like this is integral to the structure. It's just because it looks cool. Tile. <laughs> okay, got that in. Uh, was there any other uh, Egyptian facts I wanted to tell you guys? Oh, actually, there was. There was. Um, it was the founding of Egypt. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, at the very beginning. I think, that was, I think that was the only thing that I was thinking about talking about, and I never got around to it. It's not a really crazy story. It's not as crazy as the story about the guy folding the lake to get the ring around, but eh, it's a story. So, and I'm just adding tiles. I'm not doing anything crazy right now. I'm just, just putting tiles. I'm just going to put all these tiles in my hand and just do this. So, um, about 10,000 years ago, the Sahara Desert really didn't exist. Um, I mean, it did, but it was really small. Um, it's what's known as the African Humid Period or the Green Sahara Period. So there's like grasslands and savannas all where like it's just desert now. It's just hundreds and thousands of miles of just empty desert. Well, back in the day, there was like, you know, animals and humans like hunting there. And the, and the reason we know that is because there's caves in the middle of the desert, out in the middle of goddamn nowhere. And there's caves with cave art. And the art depicts like hippos and giraffes and stuff. And there's like it's just desert. It's literally just sand. So they're like, okay, well, this clearly means that at one point, aliens, or that there was, um, you know, people living here. So somewhere around six to 5,000 years ago, I mean, it didn't happen overnight, but the Sahara Desert began to encroach on northern Africa again. And so more and more, you know, uh, desert began to spring up, and so animals died off, and they had to migrate, and humans were no different, so they had to get moving. And uh, really, it, it, it came down to the... I'm sure there were people already living in the Nile Valley just because of how, like, awesome it was. Um, oh. It, wait, what? But, um... At any rate, um, they settled there. And, lo and behold, they became the beginnings of the Egyptian culture. So it was because of this African human period and everybody had to kind of hurry up and like, oh, shit... The desert's happening, but there's one river over here, and this river is like an oasis, and it's like super cool, and we're just going to rush over there. And the first people there were like, we're Egyptians, and everyone's like, oh, cool, can we come in? And we're like, no, <laughs> we, we got here first. This is ours. Um, I missed a piece. Uh, might have actually missed two pieces. Uh, maybe. Wait, yeah, shit. I think I missed two pieces here. What the hell? Oh, man, I missed a lot of pieces. What the fuck? I was going to say, I thought we had a lot of missing pieces last time. That's oh, okay. This this actually isn't going to be that hard. Um, this goes here. This goes here. And this goes here. Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, that was easy. Yeah. So that's the origin. Now, as for the story that the Egyptians cooked up, because they obviously don't remember that. I mean, that happened like thousands of years before Narmer ever united the lands. And this is before Egypt even had lands. This is when like people started settling there. So the story that they cooked up, though, was that Egypt was obviously built by the gods. Like that was the gods like land. The gods lived there before they did, you know, because from their perspective, I mean, it was the perfect land. I mean, you can plant easy and there was this river that just gave you life constantly and food and fish and game. And it's just like, dude, this place is awesome. So it made sense. Like the gods had to have created it. The gods had to create the Nile like it had to have happened. Right. That's just how what makes sense to them. So that's what they went with. So the gods lived in the land for a while, and then after the gods was a, a, a sect of people called the Children of Horus. I think that's what they were called. And uh, they were basically demigods, because once again, it makes sense. What follows gods? Well, maybe some combination of human and gods, so like demigods, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Sure, cool. Demigods. We, we, can, we can do that. We can roll with that. Why not? So demigods ruled for a while, and then eventually you get to humans, and... Um, the oldest human being name in history like we actually uh, i mean we don't know if it's for certain but the written uh, uh, the oldest written name is on an egyptian tomb of a pre-dynastic pharaoh or a king way before narmer and uh his name was iry hor <laughs> i-r-y hyphen h-o-r iry hor that's the first recorded example of a written human name in history that we have found. We can always find something else, but first name ever, Irie Hoare. And you thought like John or, you know, you know, John was a common name. There you go. Everyone should be named that. It's a common name. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm just putting down. I'm just literally placing like tiles at this point. So this isn't even... You know, this this isn't even relevant. This is just kind of here. I mean, I don't even think it really matters where these things go. At least I hope it doesn't because I'm not really paying attention <laughs> to where these things go. I'm just kind of putting them down. Yeah, just kind of filling it out, trying to make it look nice. Pretty sure this was done at random anyway. That sounds wrong. <laughs> Irie whore. I also love uh, the, the pharaoh after uh, Narmer. So Narmer was the big unifier. After Narmer, his son takes over, and his son is named Horaha, which I find great. I find that hilarious. H-O-R-A-H-A. -H -A. But it sounds like whore? Ha <laughs> ha. There you go. And then after that, there were three pharaohs that all had the D names. So it goes Narmer, first pharaoh of Egypt first unified pharaoh, then Horaha, then Jet, D-G-E-T, then uh, Jer, D-G-E-R, and then just Den. Jet, Jer, Den, and then Ka. Q-A-A. -A, Ka. There you go. Yep, Baruni. Things were weird. all right oh here comes the rope nice we got the rope there's a piece of tape on the rope time is it oh it's not even one yet Pfft. it's not even one he certainly had the will of d yeah no more titles we're just going to name our... Dude, Pharaohs had like six titles. It was crazy. Like, you know how it's like in... You know how like in Game of Thrones, when everybody has to address Daenerys, they have to be like, Daenerys Stormborn, first of her name, freer of chains, lord of the 
great grass sea, Khaleesi of all, you know, it's like that kind of shit. It was like that with the pharaohs. It was like, this is Amenhotep II, king, the Horus king, the golden falcon, the unifier of the lands of Egypt and the, the sands of Nubia. And just, it's just going on and on like that bullshit. It was just pomp and circumstance. Okay, we got this rope. What am I doing with this rope? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I got this. All right. Oh, oh, it's like, oh, they actually are going all in on this. They're actually going all in on this pulley system idea. Okay. All right, fine. I'll roll with that, I guess. Um, okay, so... I guess... I'm just putting this here. Okay. And then putting this on top of that. Okay. And I'm like, oh, like, oh, I'm like looping it around. Okay. By the way, guys, if you see any ghosts or anything, because it's getting to be kind of late night, if you, if you guys see a ghost or something behind me about to like stab me in the throat, please let me know. I, I would like to know that in advance, if you could. If not, it's no biggie, no big deal. No big deal. All right, yeah, sure, cool. I wrapped a rope around a pulley so it can kind of, oh, that's neat. It, it can I kind of like draw it taut. Yeah, that's neat. That's cool. Huh, that's neat. That's a cool little idea they had there. Let me show you that. All right, so, like, oh, okay, so going up to the pyramid here. This is actually kind of cool in the lighting. Oh, so there's this little pulley here. If you pull that, the rope will wrap around this piece and, like, not really pull it up, but it will move the rope. Isn't that cool? That's kind of cool. Aren't ghosts invisible? Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. Like, ghosts, right? Like, I don't, I don't personally believe in ghosts. And every time I hear about ghosts, their appearance always changes, you know? It's like, sometimes they're just balls of light. Sometimes they're kind of human-shaped, but they're still, like, energy. Sometimes they just look like humans. Sometimes they're naked. Sometimes they're still wearing the clothes they wore when they died. I'm like, what are the rules here? If ghosts are real, you'd think that there would be a rule for, like, okay, if you die, you just show up in your ethereal form. You're, like, some weird gas ball. It's like, okay, we're all weird gas balls. Or it's like we all took the human form, but we're naked because you know your clothes don't die with you. But then when you when you talk about like Civil War ghosts, they always wear their uniforms. They're always still wandering the battlefields with their uniforms, still having the same wounds that killed them. And it's like holy shit, dude! If I died, I mean, I like this shirt. If I died in this shirt, it wouldn't be too bad. But like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my god, <gasps> we're attaching the pyramid to the to the town. Oh my god, I'm glad we made it to this part. Oh god. All right, don't drop this, for the love of God, for the love of Ka, for the love of Jet, for the love of Horaha, do not drop this. Okay. <sighs> okay, we're attaching the town. All right, here it comes. The, this is when the aliens finish the pyramids. Ah, puny earthlings, they will never understand. We are the ones that built the pyramids with our tractor beam technology. Now lower the pyramids, Gleeb Glorp. Yes, Gloop Gorp. <laughs> Those puny humans will think that they had their ancient civilizations building their pyramids. Uh, wait, no, this is wrong. Hold on. <laughs> Gleep Glorp, you messed it up. No, I did not. All right, I, 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 oh, oh, I get it. It just goes like this. Oh, okay, cool. It was very clear the way that you should have placed a Gleep Glorp. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, if we can get in there, <laughs> I will shove this thing into the slot. I swear to God. Ah. Okay. Ah, there it is. Just needs a little bit of leeway. Ah, damn it. There it goes. Just trying to get all the corners in is kind of annoying. Okay, that corner's in, that corner's in, that corner's in. It's just this corner right here. All right, I'm going to use this corner first then. Probably smart to do the inside corners first. 
And then, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, that's popping off there. No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Get that pressed down. Talk dirty to it. <laughs> oh, you're going to fit, Pyramid. You want to fit, don't you? I think we got it. I can't tell if it's secure or not. I mean, it's pretty flat on this end. It doesn't look bad. I think it's good. I don't... I kind of want to take a hammer <laughs> and like tap it in. Why is it not fitting on this one side? Oh wait, wait. And it, yeah, this is a tight fit. This is tight. There's nothing wrong with the way it is. It's just it's really hard to get this exactly right because it's like perfectly matched to be. Maybe I can slide it in. Yeah, I can do this. Oh, man. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, wait. Ah, ah. Okay. Oh my god, it's still not fitting. Shit, fuck you. Get in there. <laughs> uh. Oh, now this side's not fitting. God damn, huh? Okay. Ugh. Did Barry get bricked yet? Yes. Bro, are you high? Let me check. Yes. All right. How do I take this? Let me go like this. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, the pulley fell off, but whatever. Okay, it's in. It is in very securely. Okay, great. Oh, boy. Ugh. Okay. <sighs> we got actually no. We got three bags left. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, all right. All right, Alexa, dining room white. Alexa, dining room white. Wow, that's bright as hell. I think I'm ascending. Oh. <laughs> oh, on your knees. Okay, all right, this is what we got. Look, this is, this is what we got here. Look at that. Da da da. Da da da. Do 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 da 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 do. Now, what we have left to build. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh. I feel like there's certain parts that could be pressed down more. The whole thing might sink though if I do that. Yeah. Hold on, I might have to push this up from the bottom and just you know yeah there we go that's fine all right Ugh. you look so tiny from this angle yeah well i have to figure out a way to get everything on the you know right okay oh, man oh god this is a whole other this is the last hurdle and that's building the limestone cap for this uh, and then the Pyramidian on the top, which is little capstone. And with that being said, I think I'm going to stop here because this is like another... 
how many more steps is this? Uh, a hundred and... Hold on. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, there is uh, 44 more pages to this. 44 pages that are left that I would have to do. 44 pages in the book. That's a lot of pages. And I'm tired. <laughs> and it's 1 a.m. And I've been streaming for five hours. So I think I'm going to cut it here. No balls. Let's do it. No, I'm not doing it. I am tired. I'm going to bed. But, um, hey, this was fun. I got a lot further than I thought I would be. Um, well, I... I don't know. I don't know if I expected to to finish this. I, I'm not sure if I did or not. Like, starting this today, I was kind of hesitant. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this, but I'm going to try. You know, I can try to take a crack at it. I don't know if I'm going to finish it, but whatever. Um, yeah, because I got to still make... I mean, it's not as simple as just putting a thing over it. I mean, I got to assemble the pyramid cap. I have to literally build a thing to go over all of this. You know, and that's going to take time. So I will finish this. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to do another stream. I think I'm just going to finish it tomorrow. I'll take a picture of it and put it on Twitter or something. But this was the bulk of it. You know. Uh, resume tomorrow. I'm just, I think I'm just going to finish it tomorrow because I have to lug all my equipment back downstairs. Oh, okay. Good night, everybody. Going to bed. Good night. We built the pyramid. There you go. Actually, this is, this is a little bit more accurate the way it looks now because we don't have the limestone covering it anymore. So there you go. I built the Great Pyramid of Giza as it currently exists. There we go. Night, everybody. <laughs> Oh, man. You got 70% of it. Oh, no, I got over 70% of it. If I was going to put a number, I'm going to say I put... I, I'm going to say I got a good 85 to 90% of this done. Um, I think I could get this done in another hour. You know, if I cared to do this, I feel like an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, I could probably get this done. But... I want to go to bed, so I'm going to go do that now. All right. Well, anyway, um, I appreciate everybody hanging out with me because I know it's a long stream, and I know I was kind of boring at certain parts there. Uh, there's there was probably a good chunk there near the latter half where I wasn't really talking all that much, so I apologize. Um, but I'm glad I bought this. I, I really am. It's a really cool thing. Um, oh, dude, yeah, there's still – there's like little boats and stuff you're supposed to put down here too. Like, I remember that. There's, like, a boat, and there's, like, an obelisk I think you're supposed to put together. So that stuff's not even up yet. Um, you know. But I will get to this. I will finish it up tomorrow, and I will take a picture and uh, share it with all of you. So thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks for learning about ancient Egypt with me. That was fun. Um, yeah. You guys have a good one, everybody. This will be Teking and Barry and Exodia, the Forbidden One, and Pharaoh Atem and uh, the ghost that lives in the, my background. I don't know. That'll be it. You guys have a great night. Good night. Get some sleep or whatever time zone you're in right now. You guys have a good night. Signing out. Bye. Let's do one last shot of this. All right. Later, everybody.